Welcome to Chromatic Chimera, where I once again didn't change the episode title on the layout. Yeah! <laughs> That's now down to one for three things I was supposed to remember today. <laughs> uh, tonight we'll be continuing our fundraiser for the Bail Project and, uh, you know, part of Cypher of Tears campaign. So thank you if you've so far donated, donated to that, and thank you in advance for those of you who will donate in the future. Um... Along with that, we will be doing uh, 300 bits for inspiration for any player this evening. So, if you're interested in helping this um, group of innocent people become criminals on a new continent, you know how to do it. <laughs> so, anyways, um, I also didn't. I also didn't do the recap this week, so I'll be giving you a recap right now as we speak. So, the wrong turns. <clears throat> We're in King Jax's hometown in the, Bron the Bronze Summit Peaks. After the unfortunate, untimely death of Bulan Yang, uh, King Jax had pledged an oath to a new god, uh, Tiamat, the Lord of Tyranny and Dragons. Um, they had used Bryn's newfound teleportation stone to go have dinner with a dear friend, Marsaurus the Brass Dragon. 
Uh, in doing this, they revealed a lot of what they've uncovered about the Darun family to Marsoris. And he was, needless to say, a little concerned. <laughs> um, he, the wrong turns decided to bring in Kit, the leader of the chapters of Brass, and kind of rope her into what has been going on. And she had a little bit of insight saying that Victor and Persephone's mother lived in Tolos. Uh, there were many other quests and things that people uh, gave the wrong turns and things to do in Tolos, so it seemed like things were headed in that direction. So they contacted Keith, another old friend, a large Loxodon sailor who was able to end Kang Jax's <laughs> love. Um, they, he was able to pick them up, and in doing so, they, drove, they, they uh, sailed through the Astral Sea. Not the one in the sky in another plane, but the one behind the continent of Theroboros, where a, a, a strange night was had, as visions of the party's dead family members floated past them in the water. Some of them failed to see through the illusion and jumped into the river after them. Some of them were able to help each other out and secure them back to land. And an NPC, one of the Ergonasi women, also jumped into the water. So we're going to pick up right after that. Um, Saren had just Dimension Doored half the party back into the boat. There's a boom, 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 boom. Um, and you are all dripping wet in the cold night sky under the moon of Talencia with Keith looking at you all like he has seen a ghost. So take it away. What? Well, let's not do that again, shall we? What the fuck what? was that? <clears throat> uh, okay. Um, so you cast detect magic real quick. And the entire sea lights up beneath you for the oh next God. 200, cool. 300 feet. Oh, shit. What, what oh kind of magic is it? Uh, illusion. Okay. So you can kind of so deduct it's an illusion. It's, yeah. There's some kind of trick or trap, apparently. What? What happened? What, like... I mean, I was just in my room and then there was a bunch of screaming and stuff. What happened? Uh, there were, I mean, I didn't succumb to it, but I saw members of my family in the water. Yeah, and oh. I saw Bulin in the water as well. I Shit. also saw my family. Blossom just sort of holds up the bottle in her hands to uh, anyone interested, just... Uh, uh, I'm sorry, y'all. That's a shitty way to wake up. Are you okay? I need to go dry out my hair before the salt water gets into it too deeply, but yes, I'm fine other than that. Well, I think for once in my life I'm gonna agree with you that the ocean is not the nice place. Yeah, it fucking sucks, right? <laughs> Ringing water out of his fur. I'm like backing away <laughs> from the spray zone. <laughs> Are you shaking oh. it off like a dog? Oh yeah, Kane Jax is like it totally shakes it off like a dog. There's a large splash zone. God damn it! <laughs> I Look, just I, just skitter I, away. <laughs> yeah. Is ringing out, you know, like doing the <laughs> with his fur. <laughs> Adrian is just like <clears throat> holding her stomach, not feeling good. Magic does not agree with her. No. <laughs> She's allergic to magic. <laughs> I could get that. Sudden like teleportation's got to be disorienting. Uh. I keep my feet firmly on the ground like Torm intended. <laughs> Well, you weren't going to unless I brought you back, so... I know, all that armor I imagine yeah, I Adrian was sinking. Pretty yeah, quick. the only ground you would be on is the ground at the bottom of the water. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. 
Is, is Keith still here? Yeah, he's have, still here. Have you been through this way before? Well, sure. I mean, every... that's I did say, if you'll recall, too bad we have to go through the Astral Sea. Remember that whole bit? Yeah. Wait, so this has happened before, and you did not think to warn us? Well, no, hang on. Don't get hasty. Something different happens in the sea every night. How was I supposed to know all this was going down? Remember, I'm a friend here. I'm every just night. old Keith. That still would have been useful information, though. Yeah. Uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, hindsight. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. Yeah, like a pamphlet or something next time. A pamphlet. Next time, man. <laughs> Flea, make some pamphlets. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> oh my god. Does anybody know what causes it or how long it has been happening for? Well, nobody really knows and honestly nobody really wants to ask. I'm sure some r wretched creature lives under these tides, but honestly I just try to haul the titan through before we get in trouble with that thing. I, nobody wants to deal with that. Brings like deeper. instantly peering over the edge like nobody asks oh well i want to ask what the fuck is down there <laughs> make a perception check Brent. ah oh, very bad hold on oh thank nope. you they should be going now 12 <laughs> 12 um yeah yeah good. you you kind of you see like the like shifting tides uh underneath but you think it still might be this illusion kind of wearing off on you mm -mm. okay well i am officially very curious about this and would like to know what is happening here i mean i could drop anchor y'all could take a swim uh, no nope. that's not necessary i don't think don't no. you want to know blossom definitely not no, I'm not that curious about the dead people in the water. Sorry. Uh, I kind of want to just keep going. But it isn't killing you to know what caused this? Like, what, for, what creature would want to do this? For once, my curiosity is uh, not, you know, stronger than... And I just gesture at ocean full <laughs> of dead bodies. <laughs> um, I've had I've had my fair share of, like, powerful beings that control the dead for my comfort for the time being. A little reprieve from that would be nice before we start charging headlong in the Tolos. I'm, like, the... severely disappointed. <laughs> I admit, I am a little curious. Look, uh, I'm at your service. We can come on back after we deal with whatever y'all are up to in Tolos. It's up to you. We are kind of on a timetable, right? Because we do still have to go to the Weaves thing in a month. Yep, yep. Super tight timetable. We should uh, really budget our time closely, y'all. This is a big concern. I can come back later. <laughs> Put it on the to-do list. <laughs> <laughs> Add it to the list. Uh, Keith pulls up his overalls and he kind of just lumbers up the stairs a little ways. It gets back behind the wheel and sits on his stool and continues piloting through the night. Um, if anyone wants to have any conversations and stuff, now would be a good time. Um, otherwise, we can kind of segue to the next morning. Bryn's going to hang out on deck for a while and just like watch, take notes of anything interesting. Okay. Uh, like on board or into the ocean? On board, just like no. hanging over the side, though. <laughs> no, I mean, are you like observing the crew or the uh, tide? A little of both. Okay. Uh, make a make a perception check. <laughs> I just pictured Bryn tying. Eighteen. Eighteen. <laughs> Picture what? I just pictured Bryn tying like some rope around her waist and be like, just just drag me. It's fine. <laughs> I'm going she in. Just goes Keith. full Odysseus at <laughs> yeah. the Island of the Sirens. Like here we go. Yes. <laughs> Uh, so you do, you kind of sit at the the, uh, the front of the ship and uh, kind of lean over a little ways and look under the tides. And you do see large figures moving under the boat, but it might not be that unnatural. Um, could be a whale. Could be a whale. You know, it could be something more sinister, but it. every <laughs> second you're about to... It could be a nursery. <laughs> could be a nursery. <laughs> every could time you're about to alert somebody, like, oh shit, this is serious, it just kind of swims away. So you think it's just a friendly creature. Friendly. Do I have any idea what it is? Like what shape it is? 
Any... Yeah, I mean, it looks like a whale. It very well could be just a whale. I don't think that's a whale, but that's fine. <laughs> but that's fine. <laughs> um, and then on board, um, you you don't see a whole lot going on. Uh, it seems that the Ergonasi twins are on duty this evening, and they are kind of manning the ship, making every making sure everything is good. You see one of them go up and relieve Flea, who has already fallen asleep in the crow's nest anyways. Um, so she kind of like shoves him out, and he kind of catches himself on the pole halfway down. Um, and he scare- scurries off for bed. They seem a little uh, on edge, but one of them did just see what you all saw, so that's not too crazy. Okay, this might be dumb, but I have an idea. All right, I like it. I... <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> Did any of these creatures get within 30 feet? Uh, the underwater creatures? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I would like to attempt to detect thoughts. Okay. Uh, what's the intelligence on detect thought? Is there like a... Is it like um, under four you can't detect thoughts or anything like the that? The creature you choose has an intelligence of three or lower or doesn't speak any language. The creature is unaffected. Uh, yeah, they're unaffected. Uh, they're pretty low intelligence from what you gain. They're just kind of... They want food, and they want to go to sleep. It's kind of like, worth a shot. Really, like are me. we food? Uh, apparently not to them, because they continue on past you. It's really interesting that it's like... If the creature doesn't speak a language, even if it's intelligent enough to have sentient thoughts, yeah, you can't decipher what it's thinking, because it doesn't process its thoughts and language. Sorry, I'm getting really Yeah, no, that actually, that is a actually. stupid rule. Um, let's change thinking. it. No, um, I, I just I, think it's interesting is all. It just, it's a no, lot, it, it is, yeah. talks about a lot about how people think and the way we express thought. No, I'm serious all. though, let's change it. Um, so <laughs> I will say that these creatures are solely driven by hunger, pretty much, and you are not on the menu this evening. They seem what? to be going, they seem to be a large herd that is loosely grouped and they are going out farther to sea, and you are kind of hugging the continent a little bit to stay a little closer and out of the dangerous areas of Tolos. Or okay. Talencia, rather. Good to know. <clears throat> um, yeah, so that's that's pretty much it. Anybody else have any combos or anything they want to do this eve? Yes. Okay. Uh, I would like to pull out my some of my personal library, um, there are books on magical theory, mostly basic magical theory, um, and I want to go find Blossom. Uh, I would be holed away in whatever, like, cabins we have. I don't- I imagine everything is being shared, but I have my portable speakeasy hole set up, and that's mostly where I hang out. I like to imagine that that's, like, less of a rocking surface than the actual boat, because it's- it's own dimension so Can't maybe blossom's more not exactly <laughs> then i'll kind of knock outside the hole and maybe poke my head in uh blossom uh, uh, hey saren uh what's up you you feeling okay oh yes i'm i'm fine uh i actually i was thinking that uh i had some books and that you might be bored and might want to read them Oh, that's that's really nice to you. Uh, let me, uh, yeah, let me take a look. I love love a good story. Well, these aren't really stories. I say as I hand the books over. This is more magical theory. I noticed that you have some abilities similar to mine and Bryn's, and I thought that, you know, it's good to have a solid foundation on your knowledge. Uh, Blossom's smile kind of falters a bit. Um, but, and she, like, brushes, like, a claw over some of the titles, and she's like, this is, a uh, this is really nice, uh, Saren. Um, it's been a while since I've looked at these, you know, my mom, my mom had this one, and I, like, hold one up. Uh, I could barely really make, um, heads or tails of it, to be perfectly honest, but, um, well, I appreciate it. Sure, I'm, I'm happy to help you. You seem off are you okay oh uh, yeah i mean i should be asking you like i didn't you know everything y'all just like saw in the sea must have been um pretty fucked up i'm a bit crustier than i was about an hour ago uh and seeing one's dead family does uh 
does mess with your head a bit, but it's no worse than some of the nightmares that I've had over the years, so it's manageable. Uh, while Saren is talking, Blossom wants to try to cast Disguise Self, like, subtly to hide her knock mark that she didn't think to hide earlier. <laughs> I want to see if I can perceive it! <laughs> Um, and I will say, Blossom is hammered, so I'm going to roll with disadvantage yes. on this, because she is drunk! Pretty uh, perceptive. Yeah, but really stealthy. Uh, <sighs> even with disadvantage, my sleight of hand is still a plus 12. Oh, um, God! So, yeah, that's like a 25 Fuck. disadvantage. Got a 16. <laughs> no. But I would, I don't know, I think it would be reasonable still, it's got like a verbal component for disguise self, so you might be able to still hear me say something. I could probably, uh, that sounds like a spell. What are you casting? Just practicing. Uh, Can I make an arcana check? Sure. Yeah? yeah? Okay, cool. Uh, Blossom will just sort of like set the books down and sit down though like while you're staring at her and pull a <laughs> bottle out <laughs> I'll give you if you do really well on this. I'll give you the school since she oh. was stealthy Ooh. So I'll give you at okay. least the school 17 plus 9 is a 26. Okay. It's illusion, right? Yeah, this guy's self, yeah. yeah, so yeah, you can tell she's like, casting <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you can tell she's casting some sort of illusion, but it's not like you know uh, she's not being like malignant towards you or anything. <laughs> that would be really bad. <laughs> Bless him, stops you, stab you. <laughs> <laughs> Look, god, god damn it. Is that an illusion spell? Yeah, all right. I'm sorry. Old habits die hard, I guess. Um, I specialize in illusion. That's I would pass judgment on it. See, I'm not, like, very good at this shit. This is why I, like, need, I don't know, these books, I guess, not, like, that helped before. Um, and Blossom will drop it and hold out her arm to show you the mark and be like, I don't know, you're you're smarty, so you might know more about this, actually, than I do now I think about it. Okay. Um, and it's, like, one of her fur spots is blue and shaped kind of like a, like a padlock or a lock shape. Oh. DM, do I know anything about this? Oh, Saren's a level 10 wizard. I would probably <laughs> say, yeah. Um, I would say Smarty. this is probably, other than maybe drawings, this is probably the first knock mark that you've seen in real life, <laughs> at least. Um, you probably know that it indicates a certain arch existence knock, but you don't really know overly enough about like what he does or what he wants, I guess, besides that he opens shit. But <laughs> that's about <laughs> okay. it. This is a knock mark. Yeah, kinda. Yeah, it's, it is. I don't why know. Do you, why do you have it? I don't know how much you like, you know about him, but um... He opens things, that's about the extent of my knowledge. Yeah, he's really fucking good at it too. Um, I'm not so... shocked he picked you then. You're a yes. rogue, aren't you? Stick a pin in that point for now. That's kind of a long story. Um, I don't, I don't really know what it means that he picked me for whatever reason. Um, but he'll, he'll like offer to do favors for you in exchange for other favors. And I guess if he likes you, he'll like you know help help you out a little extra. And I mean. We were in quite a few jams before we met you, and his favors came in real handy. Sounds vaguely like a like a pact. Are you a warlock? I mean, I don't know. I guess if you want to get like technical, that's a thing some people have, like said about stuff. I mean, I don't know. I'm not like an expert. You're smarter than me. Uh are your powers I thought you were a rogue you have I mean beyond the illusion bit you have powers that were granted to you by Nock correct um, yes 
That's a warlock, Blossom. So, yeah, I guess. Um, look, it's not that I never tried to do this shit like the right way, you know? Like, because I, I, I fucking tried, Saren, you know? Like, Mama tried real hard to teach me her magic, and I just never got it. And I know it's hard work to be able to do the kind of shit like you and Bryn can do, but you still gotta have something in you that just gets it, you know? And I don't fucking have that. Blossom, the only reason I got to where I am today is my subterfuge and murder. So I'm not going to judge you. Oh, all right. And she drinks heavily, uh, like a long swig from her mouth. She's like, that's nice to hear. Um, thank you. Sure. Do you really think anyone else in this group would judge you for that? I mean, you should have weren't here, I guess. When we first met Nock, um, should have seen their faces then. Wasn't, you know, real great. I'm going to go out on a limb and say that the others in the group aren't going to judge you as hard as they judged Kane Jax for his thing with Tiamat. I mean, you say that, but, I mean, Brain was not fucking happy. She really does not like Nock, which, I mean, like, I get to a point, at least. He's pretty creepy. I forget. I forget. Has Saren met him yet? Okay. He's, you know, pretty creepy. And then I look around kind of like, oh, fuck, is he, like, listening? <laughs> but, I mean, I think, I think overall he means well. And I think we got something of a common enemy now. Well, the enemy so, of my enemy is my friend. At least for the moment. That's what I figured. And he promised the, the favors that I gotta do for him aren't gonna, like, hurt anybody. And I trust that much, at least. So. Hurt anybody or hurt anybody that matters? Uh, I said anybody. I think uh, it was kind of fuzzy. <laughs> you have to be very specific with Pax. Yeah, uh, the whole thing was not very specific. It's not like I got like a like contract to fucking read over. We just kind of like shook hands and then I could like do this and I like Eldritch Blast a bottle, an empty <laughs> bottle. <laughs> pew pew. <laughs> Please tell me you do the high noon guns. Like, <laughs> oh fuck yeah. <laughs> we don't have guns, but I'm finger gunning anyway. We do now. <laughs> just these cats. <laughs> I feel like finger guns literally have to predate real guns. It's just yes. like, you know. <laughs> uh, I'm going to Google that now. No, they wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> because the way guns work. Nerd. They Sorry. wouldn't have called them finger guns. They wouldn't have called them finger guns. No, because no, it, it's the way No, it's the way it works. This is the hammer hitting the, the back of the, that strikes the. <laughs> okay, in fairness, I, I finger gun like this. Nope. <laughs> I'm not listening to you anymore. No <laughs> hammer. I refuse to listen. Oh don't God, talk I to can't. me. I will don't be Googling this on break. I'm very excited. <laughs> 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 anyway, warlocks. <laughs> Serious stuff. Oh, God. Uh, <sighs> Blossom, I realize that this is a difficult situation for you, but I can almost guarantee that, you know, I don't, I don't think they'll judge you that poorly. Uh, I mean, King Jax at least has gotten, you know, kind of come around, I guess, clearly. Uh, <laughs> King Jax made a deal with Tiamat. Yes, uh, I would say he doesn't really have a leg to stand on when it comes to judgment. I, I kind of feel bad though, like, maybe like... I'm a bad influence on King Jax just a little bit sometimes. I don't know if he would have done that That's without an example, maybe? I think you put too little faith or maybe too much faith in King Jax. <laughs> <laughs> as far as that's concerned. Uh... Aww. <laughs> you made Alex rage quit. Sorry, <laughs> Sorry Alex. Bye! <laughs> Bye you forever! <laughs> you know we love you. He's just <laughs> mad at me about my finger guns. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Oh no. You know, I... 
I truly think King Jax would have made the same decision, no matter what he would have done, because I think that's the kind of person King Jax is. Maybe. You might have influenced his decision, but I don't think you made that decision for him. No, I mean, yeah, I guess nobody really, like, should make King Jax do anything he doesn't, like, want to. But, no. I don't know. I'm not real proud of it, to be honest, but it's pretty nice being able to do some of this shit, like, never been able to do anything but, like, stab people. Now I can do things that are fucking helpful. Now you can magically stab people. It's great. Well, I mean, I haven't actually tried that yet, but, like, I don't know. I can... Oh, man, I just learned this. Um, and because I can, I will turn invisible for the first time, at least in front of anyone, because uh, if you look around the room, you will see many Eldritch Blast marks, <laughs> and you get the sense that maybe Blossom practices in here. <laughs> oh, you've been practicing. I mean, it's not like you just hear, like, disembodied Blossom voice, like, a few feet over from where I was a second ago. <laughs> and I'm just like, oh, man, it's not exactly like it gave me a fucking, like, handbook or anything. Ah, shit, I, like, trip over a bottle trying to move elsewhere. <laughs> well, I mean, practical application of new spells is not unheard of. I practice all my new spells, and Bryn practices hers, and, you know, I'm... That makes a lot of sense that you've been doing that, and good for you for doing it on another plane of existence where you can't put other people at risk. Yeah, thanks. I'm I'm trying, and I'll just mage hand a finger gun like <laughs> that, yeah. which also makes me go visible again, which I don't. Th <laughs> she wouldn't have realized. She's like, "That ah, shit." Well, see, I learned. This is why I practice. <laughs> for the, for future reference, this is Sarah, and like giggling while she's talking to you <laughs> for future reference don't try to cast spells when you're invisible and All don't right. try to attack anyone when you're invisible okay it will nullify the invisibility can i like you know if like needed and i like just sort of low my i'm like can i like still break into shit while i'm invisible is that gonna like fuck shit up it might shit. it it sort All of right. depends i mean you could try to hide i suppose I'm but, still good at that. Yeah, I, I don't see why you couldn't do it. It wouldn't be invisibility, but I'm sure you'd still be fairly hard to detect. I mean, I thought you were a rogue. I mean, that's what I was trained for, I guess. That makes sense. Much that to, makes uh, sense. you know, Ma's chagrin, I guess. She really wanted me to be a, a wizard. Well, if you want to learn wizarding spells, I'm sure... Well, I know I'd be happy to assist, and I'm sure if you ask Bryn, she'd be happy to help you. Uh, but, you know, there's a, I will admit, there's a very small part of me that is a little bit upset that you get all these really cool powers and you don't have to work for it, but most of me is <laughs> uh, very understanding of the situation. I mean, I guess I don't have to work for it the same way I'll do, but I uh, still owe knock favors for all of this, so right. I got I got two left, he says, and I don't know what happens after that, like, I don't know if my magic's gonna go away, so maybe learning some, trying to learn some tricks again from, you know, you or, or Bryn would be good, just in case it does. Sure. What kind of favors is he having you do? I mean, you know, knockly favors. Buzz breaking into things and uh, okay. getting stuff. Um, so, like a victimless crime, then? As far as I know, the last thing I had to do was um, get him like a. It was a vial that we found after we saved the bell. I don't know what it was. I didn't get a chance to uh, try and figure it out. He drank it. Huh. And I don't know. Interesting and puzzling. If you like, I can do some more research into this. You know, once we're can, not at sea. That could be good. Can somebody drink in a potion somehow bring somebody else back from the dead? Have you ever heard of something like that? DM, have I ever heard of that? No, 
No, I've never heard of anything like that. If that were the case, I'd imagine that potion would be worth a lot. There would be a lot of people that would do a lot of things for something like that. All right. I mean, I don't know if that's what it is. It's just... I think that's what he's trying to do, maybe? Trying to bring, bring someone back. Yeah. Do you have any idea who? Just someone he cared about a lot. Hmm. Who well. the Wraith Renders took from him. I saw their sigil. I'll do some more research and I'll let you know if I can come up with anything. Thanks. I'm sorry. Sure. I'm sorry you had to enter into a pact. Is it something you wanted? I don't know. I mean, I wanted I wanted some sweet fucking magic, not gonna lie. And I wanna be able to fucking stop Thunder and try to fix what she's doing. And I don't, I don't think I can do it without black magic because you weren't here the last time we fought her. She like, she fried us up real good. I mean, I've never seen somebody like throw lightning at King Jax and bring him down before, but she did. I see. Yeah. I would have died too, but I had, I don't know, something for my ma stopped it. I see. All right. Well, perfectly valid reasons to want to have magic. I can understand that. <sighs> Thanks, Aaron. Um, I know we haven't like known each other for very long, but I have a lot of respect for you and I don't want to lose yours. So no, thank you. Not at all. I respect you too. You're very good at what you do. And I have never seen a more bright, spark from a person. Thanks, Saren. It's refreshing to see. You and Kang Jax both. Although you two are horrendous influences on each other. I mean, I think he's done like nothing but, I don't know, good for me, but I'm definitely probably the worst influence he's ever fucking met. I feel kind of bad about that. That's what I'm talking about. He's too good. I used to be a bitch. <laughs> Blossom. <laughs> what? Well, you're so red. I mean, maybe that's why I like you so much. <laughs> Tell you what. I don't fancy going back on the boat and trying to keep myself from getting seasick. Is it all right if I spend a little bit of time here and have a drink or two? Ah, oh, hells yeah. I'll grab up a seat and I'll like clear like like just push empty bottles off of a crate so they like shatter and drag yes. it over <laughs> <laughs> it looks like a college dorm almost with just like empty like liquor store crates <laughs> post frat party house yeah exactly but like here if you're gonna help teach me some wizardly things i can the least i can do is teach you a little bit too and if you want she will start teaching you how to like throw daggers better <laughs> excellent because i'm terrible at that yes i would be very interested <laughs> yes <laughs> and so that's how i will spend the rest of my day all right so uh the rest of you well, you don't hear this, but you would hear the chunk of daggers into the wall after a while if uh, they were not in a, another dimension. So, uh, Anybody else who wants to do anything before bedtime here? Um, a Adrian would like to find something to, to settle her stomach. Magic does not always agree with her. <laughs> Okay, uh, like like food or more magic? Yeah. Or... <laughs> okay. No, not more magic. <laughs> uh, you you amble down like below soup. deck. Yeah, and Keith has prepared a lovely meal, as you would recall. He is quite the chef, so he has left it out with little like bow ties on it for people. It's all kind of wrapped up nicely. Thank you, Keith. I... Magic and I don't really get along too well. Oh, don't mention it. And he's in the back, just kind of making some more. And he's like, oh, I was supposed to be driving. Shit. And he kind of <laughs> ambles back out. 
<laughs> and that's when Kane Jack slides out from the kitchen. Oh, I've got you, Adrian. <laughs> Magic doesn't noise it well my tummy either. So I usually sometimes, uh, I don't know, maybe take a few hits of the old, uh, the old blunt and then I make some stuff because I get the munchies. So here, slides like a like this big ass. It's like a Rutherford swamp weed log towards you. And it's just like, this will definitely settle you down. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, what what is this? What Say are the maybe kids to doing drugs. these days? <laughs> Say maybe to drugs? Is it magic? No! It is an okay. herb! It is naturally okay, grows in the earth! <laughs> fine. I'll use it. it. Nice? I, I, I was able to pick from my little growing spot when we visited home. I was so excited about it. You grow herbs? Well, yeah. I've got to have a stash somewhere. And my dealer was getting too expensive. I'm a little lost here, but okay. Look, sometimes, like, you don't always aren't able to grow all your herbs, so you go to an herb salesperson, a merchant, per se. They're usually traveling merchants, and sometimes they crash on your couch and stay for a little bit and some nachos. But, like, you know, it's not the big deal. Trust me, you'll feel better. You will, like, you'll chill. For once in your life, I, you will be relaxed. I must not cook as often as I should. Okay. Oh. Well, we could get cooking with this, and he snaps a finger and a little flick of wisp of fire. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I, I guess Adrian and Kane Jax are getting stoned together. Mm. I did it! <laughs> Mission accomplished. <laughs> Woo! God, Kane Jax is such a bad in. Saren's right. Saren's Saren right. Saren is Jax. redeemed. <laughs> Fucking told you. <laughs> Fucking said I just it. vindicated Saren. Kane Jax oh. is in a bad influence, meanwhile, Kane Jax. Mom. Come toke up with me. <laughs> um. It's medicinal. It In a different dimension, Saren all of a sudden gets a feeling of superiority. <laughs> is it just it, while Saren's like throwing daggers with Blossom, I got the funniest feeling that Kanejax is up to no good right now. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so Kanejax and Shield Mom toke the fuck up, and Kanejax makes a traditional furball dish that involves. Uh, uh, lichen and other like things that grow along the mountainside so mushrooms and tough chewy plants and mammoth meat it's a hangover cure <laughs> it's classic hangover cure yeah. just don't tell Keith because that'd be offensive <laughs> oh, yes. oh, yeah right <laughs> all right so as everyone spends some time with uh doing their own stuff tonight Bryn watching out Blossom and Sarah and chatting and Adrian and King Jack's chatting um sleep eventually takes you all um you do hear throughout the night uh loud booming thunder and bright lightning slashing the sea uh next to you but you don't you hear you you go up and maybe check with Keith if he needs help a few times and he's like nope I've got it um and he's just cruising along the storming sea um you can probably ascertain all of you that these are at least parts of the chaos storms that are pretty uh relevant to the region at this time uh but he's not really having that much issues with it it's not dropping giants out of the sky or anything like that so <laughs> um he is continuing forward but uh, eventually sleep takes you. Sleep takes you. Uh, you wake the next morning to the sound of Flea yelling, Land ho! <laughs> and you look out uh, your cabin window or the porthole, and in the distance you see a land entirely of sand. Tolos, the first land. The first thing you see is a gigantic clay statue on the shore. One hand lowers down to the sea, and water flows up his arm instead of down, all the way up to where it connect the elbow connects to his waist. It quickly becomes evident that this is Coupe Delaine, the city that you are going towards. Um, it's around this time that um, who would it be relevant to? Uh, we'll say Blossom, just because uh, Tabaxi is kind of like a language in my setting. Um, we'll say that you now realize that Coupe Delaine is means body of the Lord. It somewhat translates oh. to that. Um, and you see people bustling in and out of this gigantic clay statue. There's cracks in it where the sun shines in, and you can see marketplaces and even wait, a little wait, harbor. Wait, 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 wait. Sorry, I hate to interrupt. So mm -hmm. the statue's the city. Yep. 
It's a gigantic city inside of a statue. That's really cool. Okay, that's baller as fuck. Okay, Thanks, I, just want to <laughs> Thanks, I got drunk and thought of it. <laughs> 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 um, so yeah, uh, so you see that, uh, the, the most interesting thing is Keith, you know, he's a sailor. He's, he deals in all sorts of goods in legal goods. Um, and he is approaching where the hand comes down to meet the sea. Um, I'm so excited for this. Just like dig into something. She's like, are we going up that thing? Like, <laughs> We sure are, Blossom. <laughs> and he's just sailing straight, just confident as ever. Ajax uh, is looking. You know, I've always heard about this. Never thought I'd ever see it. It's quite the Pop wonder. Used to, Pop used to tell me all about it. The great big uh, statue city of Tolos. You know, they Never say it's uh, based after Kord himself. Well, hot diggity damn. Yeah, I bet because... you'll have a great time here. Yes, yeah, so Blossom's caught, taught me a few new words in common that I'm very excited about. <laughs> I just them? look at Saren pointedly like I fucking told you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the worst. <laughs> Eventually, you hear the sound of like clicking underneath the boat as um, Keith clicks into a track that is laid in the hand and through the arm of the statue of Cord, and it begins pulling your boat up. As you kind of waited in line for a bit, as boats come up and only one at a time can go up and down. Um, and it's log flume. Yeah, it is. It's a very um, slow backwards roller coaster blossom um, is like that person on a roller coaster whose arms are just like yeah. digging into the armrest <laughs> like waiting <laughs> there's another track going down towards the sea and keith is waving to everybody you know kind of giving them the salute and uh throwing some rum their way doing like it's almost like a quick trade as they throw some grain to keith and he throws like a few bottles of rum to them as they catch him on the other uh draw or the um <clears throat> i really like the economy well, here know. Yep, that's kind of how, uh, totally not pirates trade, and he kind of winks at you. <laughs> it's okay, uh, it's okay, Keith, I mean, I've got contraband on me. We, we can be open here. Oh shit, dude, they're about to check us. There's a customs. Oh, <laughs> I look over and I start dumping my No, 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 and he catches it always. No, no, <laughs> don't, don't. <laughs> it was a joke, it was just a joke. They don't give a oh, shit. Oh, beans, I thought I was, I just picked it fresh, Keith, you had me worried there. Yeah, there's not a lot of illegal goods. I don't really get pirating anymore. Anyways, and he just kind of continues up. And as he's a pretty, he's not really a pirate. He just likes to think of himself as one. <laughs> um, so you eventually get pulled up around the waist of this giant statue is where a small harbor is actually laid out. There's a small harbor where boats can dock. And this place is just gigantic to be inside of this statue. And um, the dock master kind of waves over to one and Keith uh, gives him a thumbs up and kind of docks. And um, you see... What's his name? You see the first mate, his name is Brayden. He's a large human male, long brown hair down to his waist. Uh, he kind of jumps off and on one of the ropes and down to the dock master and begins filling out paperwork. <laughs> and you have the day. Keith looks at you always like, well, it was a pleasure wrong turns. I'm gonna hang out because I, I have a feeling you might need me again, but I'm gonna hang in town for a while. You guys do what you need to do. I'll be on the boat. I'll be on deck if you need me. Thanks for the the ride, Keith. We really appreciate it. Always my pleasure. Uh, all right. Well, I guess maybe we should try to find some kids' friends or like the chapters here, at least for some place to start. Maybe. What do y'all think? Sounds like a good idea to me. All right, because I think she said there was like some chapters that were missing, and then there was like some poor sucker got like I don't know got by the starter rats. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So she had said that uh, this is this is more for the audience because I didn't say it last stream. Um, she starter had told rats. you all to find her friend that she calls B. Uh, inside of Coup de Lane, and the B runs the chapter of Brass Branch that uh, resides inside of the statue. So you can find her. Um, she, she also mentioned that there is a there was a chapter that went missing with a, near the group called the Broken Soul. They were looking into a group of necromancers, um, and they went missing during that time. So, you know, there is a there is a branch of the chapters here. Um, Saren, there is also a Order of the Weave Temple here um, that you kind of see... It's, it's closer to the shoulder. It's kind of off of the city, a little outside of the statue. It kind of breaks out. Um, but yeah. 
that's what you got. Or you could just, you know, go see the locals. <laughs> We're gonna go find some random Aarakocra that's gonna teach us how to pearl dive. Squawk. <laughs> Good old squawk. A squawk, squawk on every continent. Truly. <laughs> squawk and I are buddies. <laughs> that's true. Adrian squawk would drag him s- through hell. <laughs> squawk is probably secretly, secretly a deity. Um, squawk. <laughs> Oh, and his real name is Affleck. <laughs> didn't re- oh didn't never learn his real name. Best friend I ever had. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, like, I can't even. <laughs> it just is Ron Swanson. <laughs> True. Uh, well, I think maybe starting with the chapters might as well be the best place to to go. I'm sure if there's anything good to know about the city, we can at least trust them to give us some real info. Yeah, that uh, sounds like a good plan. Place to start. (laughs) I used to tell y'all I was from here when we first met, and I just, like, trod (laughs) off in a random direction. (laughs) Do you know where you're going? (laughs) No. Okay. (laughs) Can I find a town guard to... (laughs) Yeah. I'm gonna find someone to give us directions, please. Sure, uh, there's a, there's like a harbor master here and she's kind of organizing all the boats. She looks somewhat in charge. This is a large open, it seems to be a small marketplace of like uh, foods and seafood and vegetables and fruits, right? Uh, as people get into town is this is really the main way people come in, it seems. Um, so there's a large open air market here. You could probably ask somebody. Yes, please. Okay. Um, excuse me, we're looking for the local chapters of Brass Guild. Ah, oh, sure, it's in the right shoulder, right shoulder. Which shoulder are we in? Well, we're in the waist, friend. Is it the first time here? <laughs> and they're kind of yelling oh. across. <laughs> oh, we're at the butt shoulder? Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Not uh, saying, King Jack. Uh, how, how do we go up? Oh, uh... Y- we right. are new in town. Oh, boy. Uh... <laughs> Well, uh, there's a there's a large lift. Uh, if you just you just want to t- follow this road, and down to the right, there's you know it's it's pretty crowded, and there's a lot of people going in that direction. So, okay, thank you very much. So you all kind of walk down uh, this road, and there's a th- just bustling people. You all kind of get separated, not very far, but just kind of bumped in and out as people wind in and out of the roads, and you kind of watch everybody, make sure everyone's good. Kang Jax is towering over pretty much everyone here. Um, this is. This town, predominantly tabaxi and humans. Um, this is the continent where tabaxis were created. Uh, so there's a lot of tabaxi population. Um, you do see, you know, all sorts of races, but it's mainly those two. So you kind of uh, continue through and you make it to this large lift on the right side of uh, this torso. Or the waist, rather. Um, and it's just this large lift that goes up the entire right side. And you can choose, like, floors, basically. Um, get in! Yeah, so you get in, and it's, again, it's this huge platform. There's, like, a horse and cart next to you. It's just this giant area where tons of people are standing. And it does take a while just because it stops every, like, 100 feet or so. Um, But eventually you get to the right shoulder. This looks like more of, like, the mercenary district in a normal city, if you would. Uh, There are are taverns, like, loud, you know, uh, accordions playing outside of taverns. There's a few mercenary guilds. Um, of course, Chapters of Brass being the biggest one does have the largest, most central building. Um, and there's a few other uh, things around here. There's like, um, there's probably some blacksmiths and things like that that adventurers would need. Blossom feels a little conflicted because this is both probably the most tabaxi she's ever been around, except for the other tabaxi city we were in, in which everybody wanted to kill her. So <laughs> mm. <laughs> she's like feeling weird right now and is definitely kind of on just high alert, like always looking like, do I have fucking family here? I don't know, shit. <laughs> um, she might actually change into alternate blossom, not human blossom, but like alternate tabaxi. Um, sure. and she'll become, like, Calico Blossom at some okay, point. Okay, so you are a Tabaxi. Okay. Yeah, I'll That's stay Tabaxi, because that seems okay, but... Good to know. Uh, so you walk up to the Chapters of Brass place, I'm assuming. Um, it is a large square building. Um, as you walk in, there's not really, like, a desk. <laughs> there's not, like, a desk here or anything. Uh, but there is, in the center, like, an open courtyard. There's vines growing in and out of the yellow stone building. Uh, there, it's... It's just a nice area where people are kind of laying out. Um, there's a 
a human bard, you can assume, kind of laying on one of the rafters, playing a violin softly. It's a nice happy tune. It's just a really nice little atmosphere. There's a fountain slowly running in the center. This is nice. I don't trust it. <laughs> you walk That's in just... and eventually you hear yeah, somebody. Best not to explode it. <laughs> that happens a lot now. Yeah, it's quite yes, not please. to do that this time. No, no explosions. Um. Can we all agree to be on our okayest behavior? <laughs> Okay. Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Behavior seems fine. Yeah. I think seems I can swing that. <laughs> Alright, you know what, Adrian Ultimate? I'm not always a good boy, but I can be a decent boy. I can be <laughs> going to we say best be behavior, okay. but I know this group. <laughs> Look, the he's okay. Heroes okay. Yes. <laughs> Look, he told me I can smoke. It's not illegal here. Anyways, the idea of making it illegal is so ridiculous. Ugh. Adrian's the chaperone before the Disney field trip, like, I swear to God. I swear to God, I will I will take your ass home if you do not behave. We will get off this monorail right no now. One, right now. <laughs> no one is getting churros if you do not behave. No flash mountain for you. <laughs> Shield mom. <laughs> Eventually, Shield as you are having this conversation, you see a uh a tabaxi a woman come out. Uh she is a Sphinx cat tabaxi, so she has gray skin and no hair or fur. Um, she has a hard jawline, and she has lean, muscular features. She wears a scale mail, but it's like golden plate. Excuse me? Is yes. this a muscle mommy? Uh, I suppose if we have to put I'm a label love. on it. <laughs> <laughs> if, I'm in love. If we have to put a label on it, yes. <laughs> um, and she walks out, and she's like, oh, some guests, hello. And she kind of waves from the other side of the courtyard. Kane Jax is immediately hard eyes at this muscle <laughs> mommy. Kane Jax just... <laughs> She's perfect. Uh, oh god. Uh, <laughs> what happened to Bliss? For the chapters of Bliss? Oh, you're in the right place. Are you trying to sign up? Excellent. No, no uh, we are already members of another chapter. Um, we are the wrong turns. So pleasure to meet you. <laughs> Unfortunate branding, but. Uh... <laughs> but accurate. You would be surprised. Um, they chose it themselves. Ah. <laughs> yes, we did. <laughs> We also like to announce when we're entering a city on a quest for vengeance. This is not one of those cases. Just uh, so we're all. No, no vengeance. We're friends of kids. Sorry. <laughs> ah, all right. That makes more sense. She did mention someone would be coming for me. Uh, well, I. And we are here about the rats. <laughs> oh yes. All right. Well, I am B. Uh, uh, my friends call me B at least. Uh, and she looks pointedly at Blossom and she says um, something. She says, "I walk beside you," and it's a typical tabaxi greeting to one another um which basically means that um she walks beside you serving the great sphinx even if you don't serve the sphinx <laughs> um it's uh. just something that tabaxi culture says to each other in this region um so she looks pointedly at you says that and then completely moves on without you having to return it or anything um all right blossom's got that like awkward like ah shit am i supposed to like <laughs> it's like oh shit is everybody else saying grace do i like <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I, I go through that all the time. Um, At some point, they switch to end with your spirit. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, and she says, if you want to get technical. What? Wait, <laughs> that's the squeaky oh, wheel God. that needed the grease. You know what? That we, was, we've that hit was, our quota. That, that, that's good. Let's keep that for another thousand years. <laughs> what the problems can we solve? Oh, God. All right. So. <laughs> Problem one. No. No. <laughs> I'm gonna die. <laughs> <laughs> Alex, you still have that bourbon? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, you gotta come here for it though. Okay. Um, all right, so she goes on to say, I suppose if you want to get technical, my real name is Breath of Fresh Air and you'll find that I am likely one. And she kind of smiles at you all kidding. Oh, that oh, joke oh, never ha, works. Ha, ha, yeah. ha, ha. That's hilarious. That's the funniest joke I've heard since I got here. All right, come on in. And she kind of <laughs> just walks past you, all her scale mail kind of clinking along as she walks. I'm going to lean down the blossom. So she's perfect. <laughs> well, I like her a lot more than Bliss already, not going to lie. Bliss is not a true warrior goddess like this individual <laughs> is. I'll just sort of pat him on the back like, oh, buddy. <laughs> how, how tall is this tabaxi woman, did you say? Uh, she's probably like 5'10". Prince taller than her. Yes. Yes! 
Uh, so I you, am not. You walk into this little private like tavern. There's not much going on. She freely walks right behind the bar and starts pouring you all drinks of your choosing. Oh, I definitely like her better than Bliss. <laughs> <laughs> and she puts them all around a rectangular table near the back, and she sits down. She's like, so you said you are here about the rats. Or, I don't know, something... We're here about a couple of things Kit was asking us to yeah, look also into. Also the Necromancers. Oh. Yeah, we understand the, uh, was it the Broken yeah. Soul chapter went missing some time ago? Oh, well, we sent a chapter to investigate the Broken Soul, and they went missing. Uh, the oh, chapter went right, missing. So... I say taking another drink. <laughs> no, as much as I would love the Broken Soul to come to the Chapters of Brass, they're a little more mysterious than that. Well, anyways, if you hear about the rats, uh, my my good friend over here can. Uh, I'll go get him. Hold on, he'll he'll explain it better. And she kind of skips up and it's like she's about to embarrass somebody. She kind of like smiles and laughs under her breath a little, um, and she yells out, uh, "What's this dude's name?" She yells, "Roland, you've got some company." And you hear like like a shuffle in the back room, and you see this guy. He is a he's really tall. He's just this absolute built humanoid or human um tan skin like weathered from the sun and he walks out and he's like hey i'm roland yeah i'm the guy who got his ass beat by the rats hey uh ah. uh were they unusual rats or were they like sewer rats yeah they I mean, of unusual size maybe yeah that's ones oh, yes. of unusual Thank size you. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, they were they were gigantic. They were bigger than me, and everyone's giving old Roland shit because oh, old Roland can't kill a rat. He's level one, and you know it's just oh, Roland. I don't blame you. Rats are kind of cute in their own way. I, right. I can understand. Yeah, and they're, they're an important they're... part of the ecosystem, though. Like paramecium's. I don't know what that is, but uh, I I hate rats. I'm I I can show you where it is if y'all are the, the mighty heroes that are gonna go slay the rat. Sure. Yeah, well, you are okay. <laughs> great, great to hear. Me too. Uh, well, Which anyways, I... I I guess just let me know when you want to go. B's gonna make me go anyways. It doesn't. I'm just kind of over this. I want it to be over. I'll pay you myself. I don't give a shit. Just get it done. <laughs> now we can go now. Can we go now? I mean, I guess might as well yeah, get started. Yeah. We have a long to do list. We should get started. <laughs> I agree. All right. That uh, is valid. Follow me, I guess. And he gets like one little dagger and he just heads out the door. Um, B looks oh, at you all. A lot of says, things started <laughs> together. Oh, and I have some questions. Yeah. <laughs> what sorts of things do you specialize in? I was a fighter. B took my sword because I lost to rats. All right. Can we just go? I, I... Okay. Okay. I did hope. To see the rats the first time with something bigger than a little knife. Bees are just bees just like chuckling under her breath in the background. Clearly one for pranks. <laughs> um, and she's like, "Oh, uh, come back if you survive these rats. Um, I have a, I have other work for you if you're here and uh, interested." A, a bee is a, is a, is a rat thing like a, a joke? Like we have serious business to attend to. No, I'm not trying to be like rude, but like. The fate of the realm kind of depends on us being here. Look, no, it is a serious issue. All right. Uh, so you came in through the the harbor, I'm assuming. Well, we came in through the hand, then we went to the butt shoulder, and now we're at the top shoulder. Right, that would be, yep. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, so there's actually two ways to enter the city. Uh, you can come in through the harbor. Or, or through the butt. I figured it out. Is there a leader here? <laughs> Do I address it's someone? Me. Oh, <laughs> great. Uh, I, I, I don't know if I'm the leader, but I'm definitely the chaperone. Okay, I'll take a chaperone at this point. I'll take it. Uh, and she Ouch. looks, she's speaking directly to Adrian now. <laughs> she's like, all right, Adrian, or a person I haven't met. Uh, there's a, you can also come through the foot and travel up the leg. There's stairs there. Unfortunately, that makes a lot more sense. It does, and the rats have unfortunately taken that over because it is somewhat of a sewer. There is a staircase and sewer on the outside that is walled off, so as to not, you know, have sewage on individuals. Um, so, it is a bit of a problem it's city because planet. they've kind yes, they've kind of ransacked the staircase area. So okay. it is it is definitely a problem, and I would very much appreciate if you could take care of it. And of course, I'd be willing to pay. 
uh, you know, I offered Roland 600 gold to do it, but at this point, I'd offer you about a thousand gold. Oh, just All right, to kill a bunch question. Of <laughs> yes. Question. Of course. How many stairs are there? Oh, there is a lot of stairs you're going to have to travel down. Okay, but like, I'm, I'm asking, like, how many do, do we get to go up? You know, like, oh. we come back up from it when we're done. Because well, I... You could take All the right, lift. I think I'm gonna you could take, take the lift over. if you want, if it's a problem. <laughs> no, wait, no, no, you. No, you want the I stairs? Run up the stairs. All right. Yes. <laughs> uh, I would say somewhere in the ballpark of hundreds, if that's your jam. Good. Kane Jack starts weeping in the crowd. <laughs> <laughs> also, the also the lift. Uh, all right, I'll just let you all figure it yeah. out. Look, I mean, I they can they can take the lift if they want. We will they take, can take yeah. the lift if they want. Sure. I'm not going to. Great. Well, I hope to see you again. Don't let the rats kill you. Um, Roland, best of luck down there, big guy. <laughs> I'll so pat Roland, Roland. What's your story? With the tragic backstory like the rest of oh. <laughs> I give Why Roland a pat on the back. Adventuring? Well, I'm from Three Spines. It's the city closest to this. I wanted to get away from my hometown and see the world. So I came to Coop de Lane to get a ship. I needed some money to board one. I wanted to see the world, and I lost to some rats, so I don't have the money to travel now. Pretty uh, tragic. Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh, Roland. Uh, yeah. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Gingex. Oh, uh, I mean, I was just going to ask, like, about this Three Spines place. Like, so you're kind of from out. You're you're kind of new in town, right? Like, what can you tell me about outside of town? I mean, I'm new for like a year and a half, but yeah, um, it's been a long fight with, between me and these rats. I'll tell you. Um, well, okay, I don't give a the rats are whatever. I want to know about like what's going on outside of like the ass of this town. Sure. Uh, well, you, I'm Tolos is it's a land of a bit of turmoil, as kind of every continent is. If you really boil it down, there's not many friendly continents. Uh, I mean, well, Toilo, not, Tolos has uh, a few a few decades ago there was people that started. Uh, What's the right word? Domesticating Wars? dragons. Oh. Sorry, what? Yeah, I mean, there's there's dragon lords and ladies in this land, and they kind of hold all the power. Just go to Three Spines. That's another reason I left that shithole. Oh, so there's one of these dragon lords there right now. Yeah, uh, she she has like five or six dragons when I left, and I'm like, oh, I'm not fucking with that, so I'm going to Coop. When, sorry, <laughs> when you say domesticating dragons... What do you mean? Yeah, you can't really domesticate a sentient creature. They are creature. sentient, yeah. Do you mean enslaving dragons? Because if you mean enslaving dragons, you should say that. I don't mean anything. I don't know much about dragons, but I guess enslaving dragons. I mean, they seem oh. to want to be there. I mean, they're there of their own cause. So. All right, that was what I was going to ask. Oh, okay. Do they like oh. being there? Oh. Are they being compensated for their services? They are thinking, feeling creatures after all. Yeah, I mean, they take the loot from places. I'm pretty sure they all have their own layers where, you know, dragons just want loot. A lot of I mean, I, I pay my muskoxes that when they help plow fields, so, like... Do you? Okay. But do you pay muskox? They get paid in alfalfa. Oh, okay. I thought you meant money, and I was like, why would you pay no, muskox? Like, they don't need gold? <laughs> Not every economy is based around the gold standard. Muskoxes have the, the alfalfa standard. Um, Roland is just narrowing his eyes like these these this crew is gonna be able to beat the rats that I couldn't <laughs> and I am the worst adventurer <laughs> he's just look, look Roland don't get too disheartened friend there's all other kinds of professions that you could take up that would let you see the world for example I was a missionary for a while but, merchants. but if you are intent on becoming an adventurer I do have a regiment that will get you in tip-top shape in uh, approximately three months mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. can you write it down Mm -mm, mm -mm. Uh, Slams down you... a book. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I don't. I don't write anything down ever. Writing down things is for nerds. However, right, I yeah. do train every morning <laughs> at four a.m. Well, while you're in town, I guess what's the worst that could happen? I guess I could do your regiment. I'm gonna lean Excellent. down to Roland like Bob's that. Burgers style. I'm gonna be like, I don't want to do this. <laughs> I think this is the first time anybody's been like, yeah, okay, <laughs> I'll work out with you. <laughs> I also like that Kang Jax was so serious, he dropped his accent. He's like, you don't want to, you don't. <laughs> you, you don't want to do this, man. It'll you don't like you with that. Kang Jax is so serious, he breaks the fourth wall. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do whatever you do, it will kill you. I saw I kill a man once. I saw I kill a man. <laughs> 
It's so, a full-grown ogre. <laughs> you travel down lower to the like the knee area, and in the calf is kind of where the sewer system would begin. Um, as you know, pipes and things carry everything downwards um, through the statue. Kane Jax makes a very dirty joke about how the pipes probably lead out oh, the urethra God. at some point. Smack his head. Smack the back of his head. That's Come fair. on, you were thinking it too. I was not, no. actually. Well, it would make sense. You are a child. <laughs> I am in. I am a 35-year-old kobold. I am an adult, thank you very much. Barely. <laughs> uh, yes, barely an adult, yes. I'm still quite young, and it was funny. Come on, someone back me up here. Roland, come on! I thought it was funny. I, I, <laughs> oh, I'm disappointed in you. I, I, yeah, me too. I, and he just kind of bows his head and continues walking. Maybe you do need to do that regimen. I think it's time. I've really so let bad. myself go. It's, it's so just hitting him Roland. all at once. He's just Poor so Roland. defeated. All right, uh, prepare. We start and end with a five-mile run. Whew. Okay. <laughs> Down <laughs> <Defeat>. now. <laughs> All right. Uh, Poor Roland. Well, we're we're. You need to stock up on anything. Uh, this is like the last stop. Uh, I'd like to try to get some healing potions. I think I don't believe we've got many or any. Actually, I haven't actually looked at me in. I think we got I, some I have, like, last one. session. Did we? Okay. Uh -huh. I don't remember. I think I have one. I think we got four. I have one. I yeah, think, yeah, four of us have one. Yeah, I have one. Okay. I mean, we can Wouldn't try to say get no more. To more. I mean, oh, I, I do have a jelly in here. Roland's like, yeah. I mean, I know a shop that sells like alchemy and shit. Uh, if we could make a stop there, I would appreciate it. Sure. Um, and as you are getting lower into the city, it gets a little seedier. Um, not necessarily crime ridden or anything like that and people no. pickpocketing left and right, but you notice that the population thins out a little bit um, and people t seem to stick to the higher districts. Um, so you're, we'll say you're around like the knee right now. Um, and there's a little uh, like boarded up sketchy little market area. And Roland's like, yeah, I mean, I know it's not like the nicest area, but there's a lot of really good shops down here. Um, people just start evacuating because of the rats, but it's not nothing. It's nothing to do with the part of town. Uh, there's an alchemist over there. Points off. So, so Thanks. the rats just quick. Are they just doing like normal rat things and being a nuisance, or are they like more a problem? They're a, they're just a nuisance. Um, the big ones don't come out of the sewers. The little ones do. So you'll probably see a few little ones too, but. Azil, you can go get some, like, just don't get eaten by rats. <laughs> Azil kind of uh, stretches and saunters off towards a few rats. <laughs> um, he does not actually have to eat, but he enjoys hunting sometimes. <laughs> so you, right now. you head over I'm gonna to... Actually, oh, go I'm going to use, uh, since, like, Kjax knows, okay, rats shouldn't be kicking an able body guy's ass, right? Like... Even even Roland, as incompetent even as he is, Roland. shouldn't be losing. Starter rats. <laughs> shouldn't be losing to the starter rats when trying to grind for experience. Mm -hmm. Um <laughs> Kane Jack's gonna throw on detect magic, see if there's any fuckery afoot. Maybe they're like polymorph dragons that sure. are descri disguising themselves as rats. We don't what's the, what's know. What's the range? Sixty feet. Okay. Um so you kind of scan the majority of like this your general surroundings. Um and there are a few rats. Um, you know, Azil's off eating one, <laughs> um, and there's they're not they're not Thank magical. Boy. They're just vermin. Really, Roland? Look, I fought the big ones, dude. <sighs> All right. Why, how, okay, like as far as I know, rats don't get giant, right? Like that's not normal. Yeah, definitely. Okay. So, do uh, you have any idea what caused the rats to become unusually large? Uh, no, no one's been able to get deep enough to really find a source. And... This is gonna be so yeah. gross, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we are going to have to go in a sewer. Um, Great. Look, uh, if we can take the humane option and, you know, catch and release, like, I'd prefer that than stomping a bunch of poor little rodents out. I don't, think, so. I don't think these are poor or little. You stabbed a cat! 
god, without thinking about it, and then you are concerned about catching a rat for rats? All right, first of all, all cops are bingo boppers. Second this is of true, all, but that's second, not the point. Second of all, they were willfully acting in a way that put people's lives in danger. These rats are just following their natural instincts. They didn't do anything wrong. They're just hungry. At least as far as we know, I mean, I don't know, we've seen people do, like, weird shit with, like, animals and stuff. If this is something, like, a chapter needed to, like, reach out to another one for, that kind of seems like some serious fucking rats, y'all. It makes me wonder if someone was experimenting with something and it might be an experiment gone wrong. That was my thought, or there's uh, some, some sort of item in the sewers, or... I don't know, sewers are a good place to hide if you must hide. Hey, Roland, the rats that you, like, dealt with, did they, like, appear to be, like, fully living rats and stuff? Because Blossom's thinking is, like, we know there's another group that went missing investigating necromancers. Like, is this some weird zombie rat thing happening? Oh, it was definitely alive. Uh, it obviously right. wasn't normal if it was hulking as, as big as me. and right. But uh, it, it wasn't, like, undead or anything weird. Okay. But you're at a worth Nothing asking. Just big. I mean, freaking huge. I, they had, I don't know. They had like little sharp things they were poking me with, but I. They when used... they had weapons or did you claws? I mean, it was more like a shiv, but. Yeah. Wait, okay, you didn't mention the rat on a shiv. Yeah. What the fuck? I... Wait, are they bipedal or quadrupedal? Well, yeah, they, they're bipedal. Look, bipedal I... <laughs> giant rats. Yeah, I said it was weird. I didn't know what kind of weird. Wait. I just want this business to be over. Can you go to the alchemy shop? Roland, Roland, Roland. So we need a full description already. of the rat. All right, big rat. I mean, I'm ready to just jump right in. There we go. All right, team leader. Uh, all right, big rats, two legs. Uh, Chaperone. Uh, well, okay, Chaperone. Roland. Two arms, can you fault us? shivs, yellow eyes. Can you fault us for trying to obtain more information about our enemy? It's only the smart thing to do, right? Oh, Looks you're over at, like. To... Okay, he writes Looks it over down. over at Bryn and Saren, like, proudly, like, trying to be like, I'm smart. <laughs> Roland, Roland gets out a little oh, bit of parchment, God. scribbles down, learn about your enemy, and folds it back up and puts it in his pocket. So you said these are, like, walking rats, right? Yeah. Do they talk? No. Well, do they, like, squeak Always or squeaky Always read the prompt twice! <laughs> do they, like, squeak or squeaky squeak in the way that the notes that they're communicating with each other beyond just, like instincts well i only fought one so no uh, i'm not i'm not gonna put it past them but so okay. they had swords do they have other weaponry or armor nope but it walked upright like a person yep any magic do i have magic no <laughs> no 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 did they oh no okay but he only you fought sure one yeah, he only one. fought one. That's a pretty small sample size. It's true. Not a reliable in. No. I mean, Bryn, I know you can, like, see through Azil's eyes and stuff. If he's off, like, cutting some rats or whatever, and you want to do, like, a little magic -y scouting before we just dive into some sewers? Yeah, I, uh, I can scout while you guys get the healing potions here, and I'll slap. 50 gold into Blossom's hand to get me a couple or just one. I'll I do what I can. Oh, hey, Blossom, could you pick up some booze on the way back? <laughs> of course, friend. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Make the nice bottle of wine. Oh, all right. <laughs> Blossom hey. walks away, Nan's shouldering. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so I love how Chris is like, oh, it's just a bunch of rats, and then he's gonna drop Vermintide on our fucking asses, and we're gonna just get messed up by the Skaven. That I'm is what I've it. described thus far. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here. Like, they're gonna walk up with, like, freaking, like, witch guns. They're just gonna... <laughs> <laughs> just a minigun just mounted well, on dude, the side Dude, that's of actually wall. a thing in I know, Warhammer. It, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, so you I head off I just see Clooney to... Discourage in my head. I don't know where everyone else is at. <laughs> right, I'm at Warhammer right now with steampunk rats. I'm at Great mouse detective so hey that's better okay not bad. <laughs> yeah Look, I... definitely picturing like radigan at the very radigan. end mm -hmm. uh you Yay. know i'd rather i'd rather fight radigan than the goddamn yeah. skaven right now okay oh now i've got that song stuck in my don't, head to i don't radigan i don't need no rat <laughs> ogres being dropped on us all right so okay i'm gonna plop down send a zeal off okay to... 
do some spying. Okay, so Don't as Don't kill is, my cat with a rat, please. You got it. So as he is uh, creeping down past the knee and into the calf area and the shin, um, you you kind of you find like a little entrance to like a like a work entrance basically to the sewer system. And there is like a central column where rats, like little small rats, normal sized rats have taken to chewing on things and making nests inside of the staircase itself that is kind of spilling out of the sewer system. Um, So you kind of, Azil kind of slips through and they do see eventually just hordes of rats, not like just a swarm, but like covering the entire wall. So that is what you see. That is not ideal. But no giant rats, just a lot of little ones. Yep. Unless you'd like to go deeper. So the rats aren't like... Oh, sorry. No, go ahead. I was just wondering if the rats are like acting hostile towards us. I don't want to keep moving forward if they're going to like try and eat us. It's just a zeal right now. It's just a zeal. Um, Most of them run away from a zeal, but... Is there any like reason I can see they're congregating? Is there like a food source or? They seem to be building oh. nests. They're building uh, things. Ground. How big are the nests? Oh, probably like basketball sized. They're not that big. Hey, so Chris, how long has it been since I cast the tech magic? Cause that's going to be up for an hour. Not long. If you want to go down, the the thing is, is that it's just a zeal right now. So if you want to go down there, you can. Oh, it's just a zeal. I thought we were like walking. No, it's just a zeal. Sorry. I got confused there. I don't want to send him deeper alone. I worry. Okay. Last time I dangled him off a bridge, so I kind of owe him one. And he was totally fine. (laughs) So, I mean, what are you worried about? Uh, It was only an hour. (laughs) True. All right. So alchemy shop, and then we'll take a break. Um, so everyone else is headed to uh this place is literally labeled the shack nice nice um it it is in in appearance a shack as well it's kind of like uh blackish gray wood that's kind of tossed together you could clearly see the nails uh some of them bent out and like a it's almost like a saloon style door but it wasn't intended to be saloon style it's like kind of broken away over time (laughs) okay (laughs) And, uh, yeah, yeah. So I'll uh, head in and uh, make my way to the counter. See whoever get get some health potions. However many we got. Okay, you walk into a very dimly lit uh, shop, and there are rickety uh, shelves and uh, like units, uh, uh, storage units, and things. And you see on the front desk this little halfling. He has. Um, he has a uh, gray, like grayish kind of skin, um, and the most interesting thing about him is that he has a skull on his shoulder that he is whispering to as you walk in. Some Katya energy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but it's it's like part of his like armor, like his leather shoulder Ooh, pad. He neat. has it like on it, and he's just kind of and just kind of whispering. Uh, Rat Blossom's just gonna like not even address it to each their own. Um, and uh, I'll be like, uh, hey, uh, excuse me, um, just looking to procure some healing potions if you got any. Uh, he looks up from the counter and he takes note of you. He looks up and down, um, and he he like jumps like <laughs> backwards, like one arm like propels himself over the counter on the other side, and you hear like banging around, and then like one hand just kind of slowly reaches over the counter, just his hand, and puts a healing potion there. <laughs> Uh, how how many you got, my friend? I got um, we we got some uh business with the the rest chapters to do. Need some help if you uh you know got any more to spare. You see a slow hand, one more, and then you pause a second. There's no more being put on the counter. <laughs> how many, buddy? How much? I mean, Are you hear whispering. He's like, how much? I don't I don't know how to how much to cost. And nobody ever comes in. I don't. And there's just this like really rushed conversation behind. In common? Yeah. <laughs> well, this is going on? I'm just going to eye the potions. Do they look legit? Yeah, they do. They, they look really, right. really nice, actually. Um, just checking. And an- another, like, greasy, gnarled hand kind of slides a piece of parchment over, and it says 50 on it. 50 each? He takes it back. <laughs> 50 total. Uh, all right. Uh, I'll put down uh, the 50. Um... <laughs> 
Uh, if I look around, did they have like anything else interesting in here? Maybe that like looks like it might be useful. Um, they've got a lot of weird shit in here. Not necessarily useful, but definitely interesting. <laughs> um, there's uh like charms and bracelets and amulets and but it's all in like dusty and it's kind of like uh like an antique shop almost as you kind of walk in here. He okay. has like rickety old wooden chairs that say homemade on them, and they're not <laughs> put together well like the shack. <laughs> Um, and he has uh, a few swords hanging behind the counter, and they look rusty and old. All right. Do, do they look like magic equipment at all, or just like neat swords? Um, I'll I'll tell you that most of the things in here are magical, but okay, he doesn't know what they do, so don't bother asking. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Um, Floss is just gonna make a note to maybe come back later when she isn't maybe about to go fuck up some super rats. Mm -hmm. Um, <laughs> she's got an identify spell to exercise now. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, thanks a lot, I might, uh, swing back by later. Appreciate it. You don't hear anything and then a hand just comes up and skates all the gold off the counter and it just clang, <laughs> clang, clang. And that's it. <laughs> I like turn to leave and then I turn back real quick and do like a quick like shave and a haircut on top of the counter like really hard and loud and then I'm gone. <laughs> <laughs> You're, oh, and he just bangs his head on the the bottom, um, and he you kind of you see the skull like his shoulder he po he like pokes just the skull over to look out. And say, what did you see? And then they just have this conversation for a minute while you went away. I was still calico blossom for this too, for the record. <laughs> okay. Uh, with that, we will take a quick break, and we will be right back. Thank you all for joining us. Uh, remember, we have a few uh, fundraisers going on right now if you are feeling generous and able to donate. So thank you so much.
we are back. Thank you all for hanging with us. Uh, we left the party doing some light errands and going into the... Uh, oh, I almost spoiled it. Holy shit. Uh, going into the sewer <laughs> to fight some rats. Um, a level one one shot here. Just kidding. Uh, okay, so everybody is at the gate of the sewers. And Azil... Uh, Bryn's familiar has been scouting down in the sewers, and these rats seem to be making large, or not large nests, but a lot of nests, a large uh, quantity of nests. And you have the access door that seems to be almost chewed away. It's almost like the keyhole has been chewed away, so it is open. And maybe that's one of the areas that they have gotten through to the other parts of the city. So, the world is your oyster. I don't like what's happening here. I'll relay what I've seen to the group. Okay. And summon as you go back to me. I don't want to go down there alone. Alright, well, that's concerning. Mildly. Just a little worried. A little bit. Tiny bit. Alright, well, at least we know um, we're going into some serious fucking, like, you know, rat stuff. So maybe we won't be, like, totally caught off guard by whatever it is. I just... I suspect there is something more at play here than just rats. I don't wanna, but I can go, like, scout ahead a bit, and y'all can follow at, like, a safer distance. You know, if there's something wrong, I can alert you somehow. You know, you hear me, like, screaming, holy fuck, what the hell's, like, you know, come come help. That'll be our code word. <laughs> there you go. Just... Stay close, we don't want to lose you. Uh, I will do my best. Uh, oh, just in case, here you go, King Jackson. I just, like, shove a bottle of nice wine at him. Oh, thanks. <laughs> um, oh. oh, yeah, uh, I give uh, one of the healing potions to Bryn with uh, 25 gold, and I'll hang Excellent. on to the other one. Those were just, like, standard healing potions, right? Yep. Yes. Um, <clears throat> okay, so... I'll send Azeel with Blossom. Okay, cool. Don't want him going alone. Sure. All right. So, Blossom, you kind of instinctively at this point go for the lock, but there is no lock, and it is just chewed open from the rats, the excess of rats, and you kind of just... <laughs> That's even worse. Yep, you just kind of nudge it open with one of your claws, and it just kind of swings open inward. Um, Before I leave, I'm like, and if y'all make like a cat and like rat joke, I'm gonna stab you in your sleep later, <laughs> and then I head on forward. Blossom's <laughs> last words to the party. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Fuck y'all. <laughs> uh, so you make it, and you wind. You do see like rats immediately, and they are building nests. But when they see you, they skitter off into the tunnels and uh, the crevices that they have crawled their se themselves out of. So. It's not, they're not really aggressive overly towards you. All right. Um, I do want to try to be as stealthy as I can, just because if these are some sort of intelligent, like, sure. sentient creatures, I don't want them getting the jump on me if I can help it. Sure, make a stealth check. Uh... Oh, okay. Uh, 27. 27, yeah, that'll do it. <laughs> um, <laughs> so you... You you cling to the shadows of the side of the sewer as it is not well lit in here, um, and you kind of walk and you do see some thieves can't kind of scribbled through the oh. sewers. Uh, a few of them, it's it's a lot of the um, the same greeting that B greeted you with. It says I I walk beside you a lot of times in Tabaxi and it's just a nice greeting and but it's it's almost used sarcastically in in a way like thieves are with right. you. It's not like it's used. It's used with uh, sarcasm. That's it. Yeah, <laughs> um, you get I can it, tell yeah. it's not like warm fuzzies for the Great Sphinx. <laughs> yeah, it's like, hey, we're we're thieves together. Let's do this. Right. Um, so you continue through, and you wind down the tunnel a little ways, and you see a circular um, alcove, basically. And there are three paths. Uh, you're coming from the fourth one, so it's a circle, and there's three other directions you can head. Uh, what you do see with your um, passive perception and a good stealth check. You do see in the center, there's like running water that kind of swirls around, and there's a little platform in the center of the circle, a stone platform, uh, where like stench is coming out of. This is an awful area, and there is a large human sized rat kind of bent over, gnawing on a bone of some sort. 
in the center of this. Oh shit. Uh, he has, or it has um, like a like brown burlap sack over its head. Um, and you can see that it has like the eye holes cut out of it and you see it has like intense large yellow eyes that are kind of looking around. It does not see you. Does this look like any kind of creature Blossom's seen or heard about? Uh, make a nature check just because of the group's history. <laughs> <laughs> of sucking at nature yeah. checks? Well, um, no. <laughs> 18? Yeah, okay, 18. I'll say that um, it does is a little demonic in nature. Ah, fuck. <laughs> All right. <laughs> this is less beast and more demon. It appears, right. or fiend at the very least. <laughs> Hidden in the shadows, blossoms just like now. They're like, <laughs> uh, she's gonna. Um... Oh man. Yeah, I'm gonna head back to my friends first. <laughs> I was thinking about making a horrible choice, <laughs> but you know what? She's trying to be better. So, so as you turn to leave, Fuck. <laughs> you notice behind you a disgusting sight of hundreds of rats woven together in the shape of a wall, cutting you off from the tunnel that you had once uh, walked down. Uh, I just sort of nudge a zeal with my foot, and I'm like, Brynn, if you're listening, I think, I think we've been made, maybe. Brynn is, in fact, listening, and she'll stay on the group. I wasn't even told we should go. Now, now, now. I think they're fiends. <sighs> okay, so you, the, the, the four of you that are uh, upstairs kind of rush down the stairs, you know, are you trying to be stealthy or fast here? Um, they're not actually making a move against Blossom at the moment, right? They are not. Then I would say stealthy. Okay, why don't you all make stealth checks then? Okay. Blossom's still trying to stay hidden, but she is now assuming that somebody knows she's here anyway. <laughs> yeah. You know, it I rolled probably, really, really well. <laughs> it would probably help if I actually got dice out, huh? Forgot. Maybe, you know, should have those for Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, for those of you who are in our Discord server, uh, I just posted a picture of the humanoid rat thing that Blossom saw, if you'd like to take a quick peep at it. It's a rat again. Like I yeah. said. Yep. Um, does my Mask of the Wild work here in this situation? I'll say yeah. Sure. Cool. 14. Let me double check what that actually does. <laughs> Definitely Radigan. Uh, 14, okay. Mm. You need me to make a fresh one or anything? Or? No, you're it just fine. means I can try and hide. Okay, I only got a 13, which is okay. not great. Nine. Nine. And Adrian? <clears throat> a. One second. It's okay. <laughs> Five. Five. All right. Good job, crew. Um, so you are a little too worried about Blossom to really take much precaution with your hard footfalls. Um, and you do get to the bottom and you do see this like just ever growing like nest of rats that are just crawling over each other. It does not really loosen when you get there. And it's between us and Blossom? Yeah. You can see like little gaps once in a while where a rat forgot to fill, and you do see Blossom kind of on the other side of it. Oh, oh. Kate hates that so much. <laughs> Safety tools. Should I just blast, <laughs> blast through it? That's what I was thinking of doing. Has the... um. The creature on the other side, like, with Blossom, seem to react at all yet? Uh, it does not, no. It's just sitting there gnawing on some kind of bone. Okay, this is still alarming. Blossom's gonna wait for her friends still, but I will take the time to make Heirloom show up. Because I can do that now, and I have to think about it. <laughs> <laughs> and does, I does Heirloom specify. <laughs> look any different for the audience? Yeah, definitely. Um, so 
as Blossom was spending time practicing, uh, I don't know if Sarah, I don't think Saren would have seen this trick yet, so this would be new. Um, but she hasn't been wearing heirloom on her like waist for the last couple of days, and it now shimmers into appearance in her hand out of like nowhere. But it has taken on something of a key shape to it. Kind of like a keyblade, if you would. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah. Anyone have any solutions to the rat wall they would like to try? I look at Saren. Should I fire a bullet? Like, that's what I was thinking of doing. As long as we back up and we don't hit Blossom, we should be okay. Okay, everybody back up. Uh, and I will message Azeel to try and get him to pull Blossom away from the wall of rats. Okay. I'll, I'll cast message to Blossom and just tell her to move. Okay. <laughs> So you all kind of back up? I do. <laughs> um, I blast the sucker. Okay, so what kind of spell are we talking? Fireball, right in the middle. Oh, jeez, all right. <laughs> uh, don't bother rolling. <laughs> um, <laughs> these are rats. <laughs> so <laughs> you incinerate 100 rats. You get all that XP. Woo! Congratulations. <laughs> Roland would be level four. Well, uh, too bad this is chromatic chimera where the story is uh, made yeah. up Shoot. and the XP, the XP doesn't, doesn't matter. matter. Shoot. Um, yeah, so you watch as on both ends this just giant ball of flame erupts and these rats are just thrown across the wall, incinerated. Um, the wall definitely stops. Uh, the large humanoid rat, I'm going to just call it a rat hawk at this point, uh, the rat hawk kind of looks around to you all. Um, and is gnawing on a bone, and it just takes off paw over paw on all fours down a hallway away from you all. Should we stop it? Chase it. Uh, all right, and I'll go take off after it, okay. using my I'll sweet go. rogue speed if I need to. Okay. Take I, off I, after I, Blossom. Yep. I don't think it's a good idea to just... Run right after it. It's Wrong going... turns! <laughs> it's probably going back to a nest where there's a lot more of that. Oh. I don't understand how you got so smart so quickly, but come on. <laughs> He's very I wise. I started hanging out with all of you! <laughs> Alright, fellow nerd, get your ass in gear, let's go. I learned no! how to you! <laughs> Alright, so you all back. run, all the nerds start running, um, and you make it to another circular area, you follow it, um, it, this thing is incredibly fast. It's crawling around the wall in like a circle, circular motion. Blossom, even when you catch up to it with your sick road tabaxi speed, uh, it just keeps hauling. And you, you grab onto it while it's on the ceiling and it just rips away from you with like a, this unnatural strength. Um, and this thing is just cooking. And it, it gets to another circular uh, four-way intersection. And you watch as it bends and, and can twist and four other rat hawks come out of it. These big human-sized rats. And they all take off down one of the other corridors, running away. The fuck? Ah, <clears throat> uh, shit. Uh, I think I'm probably really far ahead of everybody. Um, How fast can you go? 60 a... feet with my feline agility, which lasts for like a round. So if I am dashing, which I am really fucking far and fast. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. quick. <laughs> like a cat with the zoomies right now. Just whoop. Yeah. Um, I will take a moment to stop and I want to check these um, passages for more like thieves can't scribbles and see if maybe that gives me like an idea of the best way to keep going. Sure. Um, <clears throat> unfortunately, there's not a lot really scribbled anymore. Okay. Um, there's just this four way intersection and uh, the. I will give you on the the one on the right is collapsed, it's in on itself, and as you see the humanoid rat run, it it vanishes like an illusion. And Sarah, and that's when it kind of clicks for you that this nah. guy made an illusion of himself, and is it's obviously not that one, but it could be one of the other two running away. I look down at the ground, and I want to see where the footprints were. Okay, so you look down, um, and you see not footprints so much, but claw marks as it's digging through, and it's just going straight. It's just keep it on booking out of here this way keep going all right hang on okay <laughs> i'll go off again <laughs> i have to wait a full turn before i can use my feline agility but if we took six <laughs> seconds to like look around i could technically do it again <laughs> yeah so Play. you all keep running uh blossom in the lead um and you make it up to like this wooden staircase it's going up for some reason 
Uh, this doesn't seem to be built at the same time as the rest of the architecture around here. And you make it up to the top of the staircase, and on one end you see this giant rat's nest similar to the large wall. But they're not aggressive, they don't attack you. Um, and then to the left you see another chamber with a door at the end. And you see the rat, he opens the door with one claw, looks back at you, and just slams it shut as he vanishes behind the door. I hate all of this, and I'll start making my way to the door. Um, oh, I'm, I'll have my mage hand try it, like, ahead of me before I get too close, <laughs> in case it's trapped. Like, Blossom's trying to move quickly. She doesn't want to have to, like, stop to check for traps if she doesn't have to. Sure. So it, uh, I'm using my hand as, like, a buffer. <laughs> it opens up. All right. I'll keep going. I'll stop, like, every few minutes just to, like, make sure I can still hear the others. Sure. Uh, I'm going to move you over to a map. I'm not saying we're in combat. Uh, just so you have a <laughs> little bit of a visual for it. Um, I'm going to show it on stream as well. Uh, and I'm going to plug right. this individual real quick. Because um, we are, repeat, not in combat. <laughs> are we going to enter like a structured time though? Nope. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to move us over there. And hopefully that works. Oh, uh, that's so cool. Wait, yeah, so there. I am going to... Ooh, this is a, cool map. Uh, a friend of mine on Twitter now, or an acquaintance, rather. I will post his Twitter right here. You can get these maps on Roll20. Uh, and he also has a Patreon that you can go subscribe to. Um, I need to put his links in the description, but there is his Twitter right there for you. So you can get in touch with him or anything through that. But anyways, he makes awesome, awesome. isometrics on Roll20. Yeah, that you can utilize because, you know, we're part of the Roll20 Spotlight program. Uh, <coughs> Roll20 is a, <coughs> a great virtual tabletop during these pandemic trying times to stay together and keep your games afloat and running. Uh, we've been using Roll20 since we like started things here at Chromatic Chimera, and we're continuing to use it because it's a wonderful virtual tabletop and makes playing games so much easier. Also, no snitches, chat. You can see the DM layer. They can't. <laughs> <laughs> chat i'll pay you money to tell me what's on the dm layer uh so you get up to the door it's kind of propped open from blossom's mage hand already and that's what you got if you want to go inside that's up to y'all yeah i'm going in okay but like you know bracing myself i'm not just like doop, 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 doop. <laughs> right uh so you walk in you walk in and you see um, you see what you see on the map. That's the general uh, outline. You see these hallways of stone that are kind of raggedy. Uh, rats kind of crawl on the walls. There's like sp It's not spider webs, but there's like cobwebs just from not being cleaned forever. Rats crawl along every surface in here as you all kind of open up this giant steel double door. Uh, there is a corridor at the end up here that I'm pinging on the map uh, where a... A few larger humanoid rats, like the one that you had just seen, are sitting in there, like, cowering almost. There's a hole in the center, which I will ping for you as well. Um, it's a hole in the floor, and inside of that you see this glowing green light emanating out of the hole. Like we've been here before. Yeah, does this look like, you know, any kind of portal thing that might seem familiar? <clears throat> oh, uh, I don't yeah, like it, it, it does very much. Son of a lich! All right. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna start moving towards it, full of regret already. <laughs> the three humanoid rats eventually cut you off as you move towards it. Uh, the the swarms of rats don't seem to be bothering you, and even the uh, humanoid rats aren't really threatening you. They're just telling you this is our barrier. You can't move past this. Um, and they're just kind of like letting you know that physically with their space they take up. Um, and you wait a little while and you see another humanoid rat claw climb out of the uh, green abyss. And this one, this rat is a little different. He is humanoid and seems to be sentient, but he has gray tufts of fur. Um, and he, hold on, let me get a picture so I can describe him even better. Um, and he has like golden medallions and things that hang from pierced ears and black pauldrons. Um, and he is smoking a pipe made of bone. Badass. And he he looks at you expectantly. Oh, can we help you? He looks at you, he's like, you have come to me. 
Oh, um, yeah, so you're charged with coming down here to deal with a, a rat problem? I'm I see look rats, back towards but the... I do not see the problem. I look towards Roland. What the hell, man? <laughs> Roland is not here. <laughs> oh. Well, uh, we were told by the local chapter of Brass that uh, a bunch of rats were... I look towards my friends. What were they doing? <laughs> I didn't get that part. They were blocking the entrance to the city. Look, your, your rat friends are blocking the entrance to the city, and that's a problem. I understand you also kind of attacked some other representatives when we tried to come down and investigate, so, like, that's, you know, not cool. Yeah, it's kind of a bad look, friend. Yes, it is, and that's why I did not attack you when you came down. And why'd that's you attack... appreciated. Then why'd you attack the very incompetent adventurer, then, who came down here? We are just trying to coexist in our new home. New home? Where did you come from originally? He looks over to the other humanoid rats, and they seem to really respect their leader who has brought them to this new home and found this area for them to live in. Um, and he looks down, and he kind of pats one on the back. He's like, our old home. And that's all, that's very clearly all the information he wants to share with you. Look. Look, Mr. Uh, what's your name? Uh, my name is Kane Jax. I'm not going to give you the full name because it's a mouthful. Um, well, I'm Kane Jax. This is the wrong turns, and we're going to try and help you find your new home and coexist peacefully. Please, that's my goal. Uh, what's your name? <laughs> Do you guys hear that? <laughs> no. Um, no. Okay. Um, uh, he says, I am Cheatrick. Cheatrick? Is that all you say it? Yes. So, Kitrick, the reason I'm asking about where your old home is, I, it's a, my understanding that this world of Tolos, I'm, I'm new in town, uh, is... I am also new in town. <laughs> it's uh, under a lot of turmoil. I just got off the boat, uh, and we're here because, quite frankly, there's problems throughout the realm that originate here, and perhaps the problems that caused you to move from your old home are the problems that are being caused to cause us to come here. And if we work together, perhaps, perhaps, hear me out, we could get your old home back or something like that. He looks down and it's almost like they're like non-verbal or, uh, yeah, uh, non-verbally communicating as he looks down at the other rats and they all kind of look back at him and almost like they're thinking words towards him. Um, and he says, unfortunately, we won't be able to go back to our old home. Why is that? It is overrun now. It is gone. Overrun by what? Mm. Demons worse than us. Okay. Demons is a very subjective term. I mean, I, I, I must apologize. I, I've heard people be referred to as demons, and I've heard demons be referred to as demons. Are we talking like the genuine article, or are we talking like terrible people? Well, the genuine demon. There was they, they... one down there who took away our home and forced us to fight with her or leave. Wait, her? Do you, do you have a name of this demon, perhaps? Sure. What was the demon's name? We kind of uh, have some problems with demons, personal stuff that I really shouldn't get into. Blossom's whiskers have just <clears throat> been progressively drooping more and more throughout this conversation. <laughs> Is this demon perhaps, uh, you know, very tiger-like? Kind of like the tabaxis that live here in Tolos, but like backwards hands? Actually, no. Rakshasa. That. We call her the Unifier. Well, that, the Unifier's not a demon. <clears throat> it is when she brings demons and devils together. Okay, that's, yeah. that is a problem. <laughs> Wait, but this, this Unifier is tiger-like? No. Like she Scales. Ah, no. oh, shit. Like, could you describe her for a moment, please? Do I have any? Oh, I don't think I could do it. He looks down at one of his uh, companions, and he kind of nudges him. And one of the other rat hawks uh, starts describing uh, a blue-scaled woman from the waist down with six arms and six swords that are equally as terrifying, like the teeth of a mighty dragon. All right, look, uh, cheap oh, I trick. saw that one coming. Cheap uh, look, cheap trick. Uh, I knew that was going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> I'm s cheat trick, is it? I'm sorry. Like, with Kane Jax, I slur a lot. Cheat so trick, it's going to yeah. sound like cheat trick. I know, trick it's a fine. Bit. <laughs> I know. Um, so, 
I've got good news and I've got some bad news for you. First of all, the bad news is, you're right, that's a very powerful demon that you're up against. The good news is, that demon is also our enemy. And we are a bunch of bad beans warriors that are out to put an end to them. Uh, so perhaps we could help each other out. Make a persuasion under- check. <clears throat> okay, well, because K- Kane Jax is going to Because I understand how important your home is. And I understand the importance of home and where your ancestors come from. It's very much a tradition in my culture. I'll give you advantage if you want to use Tiamat's boon. Hell yeah, you're going to use Ooh. Tiamat's boon. Fuck yeah. <laughs> Roar the dragon, baby. Ooh. Hot diggity damn. Uh, that with a that's gonna be a nineteen. Okay. You can see he he analyzes you and um you can see that he almost sees a little bit of demon presence in you as Tiamat was, you know, <laughs> sort of from there. <laughs> um, and so he looks on at you, um, and he takes like a long drag of his pipe of bone, and he puts it away, and he says, "And where would you have us go?" Well, look, I'm not, I'm not trying to get you kicked out of town, but you need to find a different part to lay low on for a while. We want to win your home back. That's where we want you to go. We want you to go where you come from. We don't want you to be killed at the hands of the people of this place. I was the one, uh, you can ask my friends here, I was the one advocating for a peaceful resolution when we first got this quest. Hey, what? Perhaps we could speak with the chapters of Blast about finding them a place instead of leaving them in the sewers. My my associate has a, a suggestion. I'm gonna like shove Bryn forward. Oh, okay. <laughs> Very <laughs> obviously, like okay, I'm done. I've tried. <laughs> uh, bonjour. Um, my name is Bryn. Uh, we are representatives of an organization that spans uh, many lands. I thought. Potentially, if you would be willing, we could arrange a meeting between you and the the leadership of our organization, potentially find you somewhere to be and assure you will be protected while we, we find you a place to go. He he kind of stands up <clears throat> to like his full height and his tail kind of wraps out from behind him and you see it's glowing with a green flame. Um, <clears throat> and he says, you work for an organization that is okay with a demon lord? Well, <laughs> we will have to speak uh, on terms of agreement, uh, laying down ground rules of what it will be and won't be okay for you to do. Um, but we do try not to judge on origin. He looks at his advisors again. They look timidly up at him. <clears throat> Uh, at this point, even if he's not really intending to be threatening, you do feel like the mass scale of swarms of rats behind you kind of swell and between you and the exit to this place uh, before they kind of subside for a second. And he looks uh, he's looking at his advisors again. He says, fine, but they come here. Uh... Okay, it may take some time to arrange their travel here. They they are quite far away at the moment. Uh, would it be possible in the meantime for you to uh, pull back your area of influence so that passage in and out of the city is no longer obstructed? Yes, but be quick about it. There are many bodies and not a lot of space down here. Okay, uh, we will as quick as we can. Though I am the lord of these individuals, I don't control their every move. Uh, we understand that, but if you could try and communicate to them as best you can that passage in and out of the city is very important for the people who live above. Um, we don't want anybody to get hurt or suffer in this arrangement as much as possible. Uh, and if you obstruct travel, people upstairs will starve. And the, if the people upstairs starve, you're not going to be getting the kickbacks that they send down to the sewers that you probably feasty feasty on. No citizens, no feasty feasty for you and your friends either. Unless we took the whole city. 
look, that's not a feasible solution. We're talking about the whole city here. Right now, I think something that, you know, we should not lose sight of is, uh, you know, we're still trying to help fight the same people who took your home from you. So ultimately, this is all going to be a short-term solution anyway by the time we're done with things. And just sort of as like a show of goodwill, Blossom will dismiss her weapon so that it's like gone and she's not armed anymore. While we keep having this conversation. Mm -hmm. um, I'll just yeah, I, he says, I, I'll do what I can and give you the time. You have convinced me of that much, but who is this? Who is this we that wants to fight the unifier? Because you six and my horde is not enough. Uh, the, 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 you know how you gave me funny look before? That individual also wants to fight your unifier. Not enough. We We're are working. working on gathering allies across the land. We have already defeated several uh, very important people to the unifier. Um, so we're we've already made some quite some progress. Actually, there now that I think about it, I, we do know of an empty fucking desert city that Ooh, uh we sure do. You know, it used to be home actually to the unifier's forces that we defeated. That might be an option. If you like deserts, I don't know. We're used to the warm. That might be something we could arrange, actually. I mean, we'd have to still talk with our, um, you know, the people who run our guild, at least on that continent. But I think that actually could work pretty well. <laughs> you have two weeks to arrange the meeting. All right. We'll do our best in the meantime we really appreciate you know your your patience and assistance and uh getting this cleared up i will caution you though that you you may be able to defeat a fiend here and there but if devils and demons have set aside their differences to set their sight on one plane of existence then that plane is in mortal danger well, Thank you for the warning. You, you wouldn't be safe here for long anyway. Might as well work together to try and help. Two weeks. And you watch as he turns and he kind of crawls down back into the green glowing hole he came out of. And the rat, the human sized rats kind of start moving towards you to signal, okay, back it on up. <laughs> yeah, we go. And as we go, I send in Kit. Oh, nice. <laughs> What do I didn't you say? Even get to fight anybody? You could have. Um, <laughs> yeah, I was ready for a fight, actually. You could have. That's I up to y'all. I wanted a peaceful solution with the rats. And then they attack. Just kidding. It's like their quest in Fallout Two. <laughs> Is this our first peaceful resolution? I think so. I don't like it. <laughs> boring. The fighter. God damn it! Throws the sword down. Seriously, it is so much just like we don't like. Thunder and Matriarch, so Blossom's like, yeah, okay. <laughs> Look, if we could get a bunch of, like, giant rats on our side, like, right? let's bolster our forces with sewer-infesting rats. He did like, say he was a demon lord at one point. Demon Look, rats and dragons, let's fucking go. God damn it, they are the Skaven. <laughs> um, yeah. No. Yeah, I, I message Kit, I say, um, Kit, we have found the civilization of rat creatures below Tolos, and we would like to arrange a meeting about the treaty and homing project. Fandish rat creatures who hate the wraith renders. They are against the wraith renders. I'll give you this. Gonna... You all work fast. I'll see what I can do. <laughs> I'm going to I'm gonna cast sending to my Tiamat associates. Wrong secretly. turns my ass. Mm -hmm. Secretly, because I'm going to ask if they know anything about this uh, cheap, uh, cheap trick rat. Sure. What do you say? I'm basically like, okay, we're in Tolos, met met some rats, claims to be demon lord, know anything about them, potential allies. Something along those lines. I only get 25 words, so yeah. I'm trying to fit as much in uh, as you I hear, can. You hear the voice, are you to Tiamat or the to the, Herald? To the Herald. Okay. Uh, you, you hear Tiamat's the Herald. Kind of a baby. Yeah, you hear the Herald talk back and he, he says in his low, creepy voice, he says, Well, I'm not surprised that demon lords are being ran out of hell. Something worse lies beneath it. Uh, can I, like, return a message without... Yeah, I like... don't care. <laughs> and I'm gonna... 
so would this be a good would, would you say this former demon lord would be a good potential ally to take on the wraith renders and the day runes you're trusting one demon why not more that's a good point Do you know anything about these rats? You're, you're well-traveled. Tiamat's flown across the realm. Uh, though I have always wished to go to my mother's home, I have never made the pilgrimage myself. Hmm. Shame, because uh, I wanted to know if these rats would be good on their word. They are rats, after all. <laughs> and that's where it ends. <laughs> I just... Come on, <laughs> bad reception down here. <laughs> All right, so uh, my associates uh, on the other side tell me that perhaps we should consider allying with the rats. <laughs> Adrian squishes one on the way out. <laughs> Look, I mean, if they'll be willing to help us, like, fuck up Thunder whenever she comes back, I'm, I say we fucking help them move in. They can have that whole goddamn tower she had. I bet she'd hate it too. Oh my god, let's do it. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'll, I'll lean over to Adrian. Don't worry, Adrian. We'll probably get in a fight with the local law enforcement at some point. It's just a matter of time. Good! <laughs> oh god, Adrian's just gonna walk up to someone and just That's punch great. them. Hey, you! <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so you make your way out of the sewers and Roland is standing there uh, kind of like scratching the back of his head, kind of peering through the keyhole, seeing what he can see. He kind of opened the door and knock him in the noggin. Oh, oh buddy. <laughs> Do you uh, hear anything good? No. <laughs> All right, well, we got to, I think, get back to being filler in. Um... Did you Did you see the big rats, the humans? Yeah, um, there's like a whole kind of society moving in, in here. We're going to try to find them a different home. It's the last time they make fun of old Roland. Whatever helps you sleep at that, buddy. <laughs> I just, like, pat him <laughs> on the shoulder and start heading back. <laughs> Don't worry, Roland. Stick with me. No one will make fun of you ever again. Yeah. All right. I'm buff now. Y'all want to hit a tavern? Roland, I take yes. everything back that I just said. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> just like on my heel what back the other direction <laughs> all right so uh you have several other places of interest to go in this town or you could just you know call it a day or an in-game day at least and hang out at the tavern um keith's whole party is in town the order of the weave have a temple in town you could look into the broken soul um all right i'm gonna do a favor for adrian i'm gonna look for a fighting ring Ooh. Ooh, fight club, let's go. Okay. I mean, we I mean we're rich, but we could always use more money, right? Like yeah. I I could go bet money on Adrian beating the shit out fight of people. Club, fight okay. club, fight club, fight club. Uh make a make a just a charisma check as you negotiate with the locals where a fight club would be. This is King Jack. So uh I know we're not supposed to talk about it, but uh <laughs> club man. <laughs> oh god, that's not good. <laughs> that's a seven. I was about to say, can I help, but <laughs> Uh, you catch wind of a tavern. It's called the Locked Irons. Um, and there is a small fighting ring uh, in the Locked Irons. I'm going to just grab Adrian by the arm. All right, Adrian, we're going to Locked Irons. We're going to have a pint and we're going to have a good time. You're coming with me. Everyone else is welcome to join us, but uh, it's going to get, yeah. get a bit punchy. So uh... I mean, you know, I'm there. <laughs> Someone's got to cheer on and, uh, you know, provide the musical accompaniment as Adrian fucking wails on some nerd. Let's go. Ah! <laughs> All right. So you make, it, <laughs> you make it to the locked irons. Uh, it is in the lower half of um, the lower half of the, the city. Uh, so you make it to the locked irons. It is a it's a pretty nice bar for being in the place it is. Um, and it is a, uh, it's a circular area in the center. It is mostly built around this fighting pit. Uh, you get the, you get the idea that if you would have talked to the right locals, maybe you get a more legit one. Um, so yeah, that's what you got. There's a little bar, um, and it, there is, it's almost like a little food truck outside and it says Grubhub. Um, that's what oh you got. Oh my God. <laughs> they pay their workers a living wage. They do now. 
Good. In, in, in fantasy, fantasy world, land. they do, oh, yeah. <laughs> in fantasy land, yeah. delivery workers get paid the right wages. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so that's what you, that's what y'all got. Um, behind the bar, you see. Oh, this actually works nicely. You see um, a yeah, another Tabaxi. Is it's the predominantly uh, Tabaxi town. Um, she is. She kind of has like a calico look going on. Um, she's very short, uh, but she's very attractive. Um, she ha- there is also a. Uh, uh, a server going around a human server she has red braids tan skin freckled cheeks um and her name is emmy the barmaid um and she's walking around she's serving everybody she's taking bets uh she is extremely good at her job she's serving this entire tavern and nobody is waiting for anything she is just on the ball taking bets in one hand serving beer in the other she's just really killing it so um that's what you got in here I right. would like to find the quietest corner I can and take out a book. I will do the same. Uh, yeah, it's a it's nerds. A di- it's a difficult area to find a quiet <laughs> place. We're gonna find in. the deepest, darkest corner where all the sleazy people like to hide. And we're just gonna pull out books and our book lights, and we'll be fine. Oh my god, I love they're, it. They're just gonna cast silence on a section just. <laughs> Interesting. Is there a fight like happening now, or? Uh, there's no fight currently going on. Um, it it doesn't seem like it's like a super like big fight club. It just it it happens when it happens around here. Uh, I don't know, Adrian. Okay, I, you wanna? I approach the bar barkeep. Okay. Uh, there's a tabaxi woman, uh, as described. Uh, calico. And she is sitting there taking orders. Um, she's Pleasure. like, hey, can I help you? Um, who would we speak to about setting a fight? Uh, Emmy can help you or I can help you. Either one doesn't really matter. Excellent. My friend Adrian here would like to fight somebody. I'm going to go yes. eat. Have fun, Adrian. Okay. Now I go I didn't find get my, my fight home. today. I need oh. it. Probably pretty cranky without a fight. I crave violence! Don't we all? I have the perfect contender for you. Don't you worry. Shield mom. <laughs> Shield mom craving violence is a fucking mood right now. In these times. We've been Adrian, going through some shit. <laughs> Adrian craving violence is a fucking mood. I'm here for it. Uh, the the barkeep, she says, oh yeah, 15 gold to enter. Get her like. Right. Wait, hold on though, real quick. Like, what are like your your you know your rules? Is like bare fisted shit, or like people wailing on each other with like weapons? You know, different fight like places got different standards. Uh, We're new in town. Wail away, I guess. All right, Adrian. I'm <laughs> like start pulling out gold. <laughs> oh, she's already paid for her entry. Okay, so fifteen gold off, and yeah. um. Ajax has already paid for two additional entries for Adrian. <laughs> um, all right, so <laughs> if we want to do three whole rounds of this, I'm going to simplify it to a few rolls, um, just so we're not listening to <laughs> just Adrian kicking the shit out of dudes all night. But, but Chris, <laughs> that's the content I'm here for. Yeah, all right. <laughs> uh, so we'll do it in a one shot. We'll do round by round Amazing. Adrian combat. That would be pretty amazing. Yeah. Like, Battle Royale, let's go. It would be fun. Yes! <laughs> All right. Um, so, the barkeep runs off behind and into, like, a, the back office. And she says, Ronan, I got somebody for you to fight. And you hear, all right, finally. And you watch as this uh, large tabaxi man, he is uh, he's a lion's mane, and he is a white lion with black stripes yes! down his back. Um, he is wearing plate mail, and he has this big, like, mace in his hand. It's like a two-handed mace. Not quite a maul, but... Um, and he walks out. He's, like, gauntleted already. He's already laced up. It's like, and who will I be fighting tonight? Just thumbs what? at Shield Mom. He walks over. Shield Mom is just standing there, arm crossed, and is just looking with approval. <laughs> he walks over. He's, like, a foot taller than you, but not quite as muscular. A most... See, funny thing is, Adrian's really not even that tall. Right. 
Um, he's like a foot taller, and he walks over, and he extends out a handshake to you, and he's like, well, best of luck in the ring, then. Mm, you as well. Shake, shake. All right. Um, let Go ahead, and I'm going to simplify it to two rolls. Uh, go ahead and roll an athletics okay. check, and then just roll the hit after that. So we'll just see who comes out on top here. Okay. Hot deck. Uh, uh, blue. So 18 plus 7 for the athletics. Uh, 25. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and then a roll to hit. Uh, 26. Yeah, holy shit. Okay. <laughs> um, so you just kicked the hell out of this guy. <laughs> the, the first thing, uh, he again, he's very <laughs> respectful. He's not like, you know, a, like a street fighter or anything. He's like very like duels or rules of engagement and he's fighting you honestly and earnestly um you manage to kind of spin him around and push him to the ground with your athletics check eventually and then you just kind of wail on him in the back of the head and he just kind of like dirt or face into the dirt just kind of smushes down you can see the imprint when his mane gets up and he kind of brushes it out and he's like all right well well fought you came into my own place and you kicked my ass all right i feel better now I'm glad I could provide that for you. Adrian, was it? <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Uh, uh, now, you are a worthy opponent, a valiant fighter. Thank you. Uh, might I invite you to join me in my regiment tomorrow? Well, I've got a regiment of my own. Perhaps we can uh, trade story secrets. Yes, that sounds <laughs> excellent. Uh, I start at 4 a.m. Uh, when is well, yours? Uh, 4.30, but I'm willing to get up a little bit early. All right. I'll wait for you. All right. It was a pleasure. And he gives you another handshake and a clap on the back. Um, and you guys are going to work out tomorrow. <laughs> um, Kane, Jack Kane Jacks is at the side of the ring with a canteen, like, you know, doing the classic boxer thing. Like, all right, you got this, Adrian. You got this. I'm, I'm Mickey from Rocky, okay? This, <laughs> that whole yeah. exchange was amazing. <laughs> essentially going to start, like, CrossFit or something. Oh, God. Yes. So, Tybo, please be Tybo. Tybo. Yes. Adrian's just going to start fantasy Tybo. I'm going to say that that was the strongest guy in here. So I, and he, he did not get close. So I'm going to say Adrian throughout the course of the night, roll a D 100 and let's see how much gold Adrian makes <laughs> through her yes. fighting. Roll a D 100. Okay. Minimum is 30. Okay. Let me find one of my percentile dice. There we go. Uh, oh, heck 22. Okay. So 52. Um, so just take 52 gold and write it down. You throughout the you you get your entry fee back too, so it's just 52 positive gold. Um, and so you just kick some ass all night and really get out the boredom of not having a good fight in a while. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, this was a lot more entertaining than yelling off a cliff, I will say. <laughs> so sometimes you just you want to fight something, okay? I mean, I, I I'm all it. worked up for these rats. I mean, I understand. It's just we couldn't go walloping on those rats. Uh, Plus, you got is... a new workout buddy out of it. Yeah, I do. I have two now. Kind of just be leading this. like a group every morning. <laughs> I know. Um, like you all just come out of like whatever inn geez. we're staying at, and you just see like a field of people doing like uh, burpees. Yeah. It's that scene from Forrest Gump. She picks people up as she yeah. runs. Yeah. Yes. Yes. It's, <laughs> it's, yes. It's a less problematic uh, Mulan scene. Yes. <laughs> of the training yeah. montage. Yes. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Uh, yeah. So Must <laughs> defeat. The demons. <laughs> the flabby muscles. Um, so that's what Adrian's up to in the next morning. She's kicking ass all night. She's working out all morning. Um, is there anything else anyone wants to do while Adrian is just kicking some ass? I'm combing all the books I picked up through my travels about the, the sea we passed through. Okay. I want to know what the fuck is up with that. Make a history check. I'll join her, actually. Okay. Can I offer yeah. assistance? Yeah, that's fine. So go with advantage. Blossom is just still kind of super paranoid and on like high constant alert for like, do I have like family here somewhere? Mm -hmm. So 21. 21. So, um, 
So, you know, the world was created by Astisha and Kozoth, the two first gods. Uh, but a lot of the world changed when Agora came, and she destroyed many things and created many other things. And she was almost like the second coming of, uh, you know, the gods, in a sense. And she, um, with her, a few other corrupted stars fell out of the sky. And you find a passage about a folk story about a corrupted star that sank behind Theraboros and created the Astral Sea, where people hallucinate in their own ways, and no one ever has the same experience there twice. So if you were to go back, you might have a completely different hallucination. You might have a, a dragon attack you, uh, but something, mm, it's always a place of unrest and uh, sailors tend to avoid it unless they have to, which you did because the other way was worse. So. <laughs> okay. An answer, satisfying. <clears throat> So the two of you comb through books in the back. Adrian, like, knocks a guy over your table at one point and, sorry! <laughs> and he kind of gets up and turns around Adrian and socks him in the face and he just falls down. <laughs> Honestly, this is why I chose the books. I knew what she'd do. <laughs> she was always going to win. There was no question. Exactly. Why do we need to watch when we know what's going to happen? Exactly. Page uh, turn. <laughs> just... <laughs> Synchronized flip. <laughs> Um, Blossom, make a perception check. Um, do, do, do. Shit, where'd I put my sheet? Not great. Uh, that is, oh, it's only a 10. Okay. Never mind. But. You're good. You have a good night. <laughs> um. Blossom relaxes and drinks more. <laughs> yep. Yeah, it seems clear to me. Uh, all right, so y'all enjoy this little evening. At one point in the night, as you are all coming together, Adrian, you finish your last round of brawls, and the books have been read, drinks have been drank. You sit down at a circular table in the back with a bunch of like knotted uh, knots in the wood, and you see a uh, red-winged little imp fly through the door. He has a little leather jacket on, um, and he is serving uh, at Grubhub, and he this is Grub the Imp that you met long time ago, and he's like, all right, I need ten more of those, three more of these, three more of those, and he's just ordering people around. He's like, we're and move it, we're out there, and he is seeming to manage this place. Hello, Grub. He he looks over. He's like, oh shit, and he just flies out of the door. <laughs> Yeah, that seems right. He peeks his head back in to see if you're following. Who is this? Uh, how to describe Grub? Yeah. Um, he is Nip. We met him. I believe we frightened him a lot. Wow. And he led us through a forest, except we still got lost, sort of. Right. I didn't say I was good at it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are you any better at cooking? I've got a business, don't I? And he's just like really like sad <laughs> to run into all of you. <laughs> it's okay, Crab. We need nothing from you at this moment. Therefore, you will not be fireballed or any sundry effect. Nothing but more drinks, please. I'm the food. Okay. And he, he flies over and picks up some well, drinks. Well, then, too. snacks. Snacks, snacks, snacks. <laughs> he, he, Did he save you from a bear trap? Why are you so miserable at seeing us? I just, you know, you weren't, we weren't, we didn't have the, like, the best experience. I, I flew you Please into a volcano. don't remember the details. <laughs> I flew you into a volcano. Uh, you freed a bunch of demons. Oh, yeah. And then I took the hell off yes. because my favor had been repaid. You saved me. I led yes. you through the forest. That was all oh, I had yeah. to do. yeah. We didn't do that. That was probably we a terrible the idea. volcano. Yeah. Yep. I mean, that sounds about right from what I know of you. We'll stop the horseman. But we stopped the, didn't the horseman. <laughs> and we didn't die. Got pretty oh. close there. And Pull I just win. like slap King Jacks on the shoulder. Because <laughs> that's when we first started being friends. Aww. Uh, it was a very on brand adventure. It sounds like it, yes. Yeah, yeah. It did not did we go release like a whole right. bunch of demons. Yep. Yeah, that was your idea, not yeah, I'm mine. I'm sorry. <laughs> So the, next time, what? so the next time, Bryn, you want to criticize the decisions I make, I think <laughs> okay, I'm just going to bring up... Fair. 
Kane Jax just walks away feeling so vindicated right now. To be fair, that was also before we found out anything about Thunder, so I mean... There's still a bunch of demons we released. What happened to not judging on Origin? All right, fine, but they did end up being bingle boppers. Did they? Yeah, they all turned on us and tried to get us killed, I thought, by erupting the volcano. I no, we collapsed the volcano. That was our fault. Oh, that was us? Oh, yeah. beans. I... No, that, that was like the horseman in the middle, and we tried to blow it up, and then it all fell down. It was a lot. Oh, this beans. gets better every time I hear more details. This is yeah. amazing. In classic oh. style, we helped by making it worse. Of course. <laughs> I, I almost died, so my, my details are a bit fuzzy on it. I think I accidentally exploded someone who was invisible. That's impressive. Oh, that's how we met Beans! <laughs> <laughs> Wait, that's how you met who? Beans! <laughs> Wait a second. I'm gonna look at King Jax. You had something to do with this. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Beans isn't even this person's real name. I actually feel kind of bad about that one. They never yeah. They met a T-Fling. He didn't have a name. They named him Bean, sorry. He had like amnesia or something. I wasn't aiming for him. He was invisible. Uh, he uh, gave us one of the Acrix, actually, didn't he? Yeah. Uh, all right, all right, wrong turns. Focus up here. Hold on. Current, current mission. I mean, you're living up to your name. That's all I have to say about this. <laughs> Grub is like current. sneaking away. Like, maybe they don't I need can... it. I'm going to grab Grub by the tail. Oh, no, you don't. Oh, Get boy. over here. Yeah, what? we still need snacks. I got you We're snacks. Right. Oh, sorry. I'm not gonna bully him. I've got a tip good. I I, yeah, I, okay. I plop a joint in Grub's hand. Even this will get your little fiendish ass high. Now look, why don't you sit down and have a chat? I got some questions about fiendish things for you, buddy. He looks up. I'll buy you a beer. All right. <laughs> he sits down, <laughs> saddles up to the. Uh, he, you know, there's a little extender on the chair, so everyone has the same height, and he kind of pulls it up and sits at the bar with you. Kane Jax is gonna lean over to, like, one of the service per people. Would you be, like, so kind as to provide us with, uh, some drinks here for me and my compatriots? Of course, how many? And, uh, Emmy, the barmaid, is just kind of running around table to table still. Six, please. You got it. And she walks over, brings a few mugs a little later. What's the damage? Oh, uh, Garb, are they with you? He looks up. He's like, yeah. <laughs> She's like, nothing <laughs> then. Go on. I'm gonna, I'm gonna slide her ten gold anyway. You're gonna slide her ten gold? Yeah. Okay, she's Ajax rich as fuck generous. now. <laughs> yeah, I know. You give us five Gs. What do you want me to true, do? True, that's that? true. I did do that. Her eyes We're just... We're just here to ruin the economy. <laughs> yeah. Her eyes Call just me go Mansa Musa. wide. <laughs> and she's like, anything you guys need, you just let me know. Emmy's got you first. Priority. Uh, yeah, no problem. Uh, all right, grub. And I'm going to sit down. All right, there's your drink. Uh, take a few sips. No, uh, slide I've got my the... drink to Blossom. I I'll take it. <laughs> all right. My compatriots might jump in here. Uh... Do you know anything about rat demons? Rat fiends? Uh, sure, yeah. Before I left hell, yeah, demons. Uh, what, 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 what do you know about them? Uh, they're, they eat a bunch of shit. Uh, they're, they're really gross. They smell really bad. The rats, okay. The rats, yeah. And then they, they have a lord, uh, he was in a band, I think. A band? Cheap Trick. Uh, oh, yeah, they had that one song about wanting you to want me or something like I think, that. Yeah, something like that. Um, Everyone leaves. <laughs> I know that song. Hey, I like they're that from song. Rock. Yeah, they're good from Rock. Hey, night, everybody. <laughs> Stream <laughs> canceled. Hey, fun fact. I Want You to Want Me was the first song I taught myself on guitar. So, fun, fun puddings fact. Uh, yeah, so he's like, yeah, I mean, they're... they're the rats. Uh, they had a the leader named Cheatrick. Uh, he was uh, he was pretty gross. I I never met him, but uh, he ruled one of the lower layers. Sure. All right. I need more than just gross. They're rats. I understand that part. Uh, sure. I don't know what else to tell you. I didn't. I didn't have okay, a close okay. relationship. I was just wondering. We're, we're we're trying to get some information on. What do you know about the the wind rates? The 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 rend race? What what Wraith is their renders? name? Oh my. Wraith 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 Why am I? Sorry, my brain is pudding right now. I don't know shit about them. Do you know anything about like a six blue, six armed blue scaled Merolith thing? What the fuck no. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, anyone else got any questions for Grub about hell and things? No, but they have had a thought. 
He said the the red demons they eat uh, anything, anything. Sure, yeah. Could we get them hired by the city as a sanitation crew? Huh? Now that's an idea. We wouldn't have to relocate them. Well, they would get all the food they need. They could be given a paycheck, a wage. They could. There were still some concerns with space, though. Like, if there's a lot of them coming from a different plane. That's true. We would have to get the head counts. I mean, is it possible for them to shut the portal so that not all of them can come through? Uh, But But they won't want to to escape the, you know, the wraith renders. I wouldn't want to lock them in there, to be honest. Like, I don't fucking want anyone to have to deal with those. Wait, they they escaped hell. Yeah. Seems yeah. like it. Or, oh, that's all right. Good. Keep keep it on the DL. They're kind of here in Wait, the city. What do you you say? That's not good. Like, what do you what do you know? Have you like when's the last time you were there? You still got contacts over there? Nope, still an imp. I haven't moved up the hierarchy. Uh, well, I. Well, that I, doesn't mean you haven't heard anything. Sure, Wait. I mean, I just I just know that. Uh, what. You said you were originally a very powerful fiend before you were turned into imp. Yeah, I lie. Is this, like, news? You know, asking a devil to be truthful shouldn't be that much of an ask. I'm sorry. And then yeah, I'm sorry. Like, yeah. Rethink that sentence, go through it word by word, and get back to me. <laughs> and you're going to go trust Tietrick <laughs> in the sewers? Well, that's uh, what I'm asking. Can we trust him? That's what we're him? trying to figure out. But what were you, you going to say? Do you know something about the Wraith Renders? I don't know that name, but I just know that uh, the reason I left is because things were getting a little weird down there. A lot of people were shifting alliances. A lot of people that kept Grub safe weren't keeping Grub safe anymore. Hmm. Hmm. Is Thunder on that list of people? Uh, who? A Rakshasa named Thunder. Oh, Might sure. Might have other names. I mean, there's Wait. Rakshasa for sure. I mean, I, there's not many, but... So don't know the... any named Thunder. That's at least what she uses on this plane. Um, How many of those Rakshasa are female? Oh, uh, well, I only know two, and one of them is female. The other is not. What is her name? The one you do know? Uh, I'll look it up <laughs> in my uh, vast memory. Hold up. <laughs> I know it's coming. <laughs> Cycle through your I'm like gonna... little card roller. <laughs> Blossom will like take a really, really deep swig and mask of many faces, just her face to look like Thunder, like or at least what melted away from Thunder when she, you know, died while threatening me. So... <laughs> oh yeah, sure, that's her. Fuck! What's her name? Oh, uh, what was the name? I can't fucking think of a name. Hold on. <laughs> That's all right. We can just move on. Get back to us. <laughs> yep. It's she never gave it here. <laughs> we'll be back power to power in knowing a fiend's true name. Yeah, she never true. gave us a name. <gasps> <gasps> uh, You've well, been dead only for had 25 the face years. Up for like, like a second, too. She did not keep it up any longer than she needed to. I mean, I, I used to call her Yadvi, but I mean, I know a lot of people who... Uh, Fiends have a lot of different names. Even I'm, you don't, you think I go by Grub and Hell, do you? So, I mean, no, maybe. No, but... So no, was... the the Baylor that told me I was Grub. Now you think I, yeah, whatever. Did you ever work for uh, what was the name? Yad Yadavi. Yadvi. Yadvi. Uh, no, I I, I I worked for a Baylor. He was a real dick. He called me Grub, so I left. What do you know about Yadvi, though? Like, what have you heard? Anything? Um, no, I was, I haven't been there in many years, like, uh, 15. Am I believing him right now? (laughs) We're gonna say check. (laughs) I've been drinking a lot. (laughs) Uh, shit. Numbers, I have numbers. Um, yeah, that's, uh, 12. <laughs> yeah, you believe him. <laughs> Alright. I sort of lean back and just scowl and drink quietly. Being mad. <laughs> well, I'll get an, I'll get like three more drinks for Blossom. 
Oh man, that is all right. She... Yeah, it's the boss, you are feeling sauced. <laughs> yeah, she is very drunk now. <laughs> well, anyway, Grub, I appreciate your help. I'm sorry we didn't originally get off on the right foot. I've uh, had a recent change in heart when it comes to my relationships with fiendish creatures. And why is that? And he puts both of his hands kind of under his chin and just looks at you. Let's just say I've made some new friends. All right, well, I'm sorry I can't be of more help, but uh, again, all I really know is that alliances started shifting in hey, hey, grub. other planes. Yeah. Are you tired of being grub and just kind of serving food and drinks here? Do you want to, like, earn your power back a little bit? Well, I would really like to work up the hierarchy and become a different type of uh, fiend, but... Uh, Let's say I know someone who could turn you into Abishai. Sure. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty high. You need... All I ask is that you serve as eyes and ears for us in all things fiendish. You hear things that happen here, pass it along to me. I'll be sure to put in a good word with my new friend. So you want me to keep an eye on Cheatrick and the rats? Not just Cheatrick and the rats, but the, any fiendish business that's going on in here. Any changes in structure, or power, you name it. If you hear anything about uh, not thunder, we need to know. We can call her Thunder. I'll remember. That's easier. Right. That's what she uses here, at least. Yeah, sure. we need to know any and all fiendish activity. Especially that one I was telling you about. The one with the arms and the scales. You're a smart little- you're a smart guy, Grub. I- I- I, I know you- you'll pick up quickly. Uh, sure thing. Uh, is there- What's the timetable for getting me to become uh, something different here? I'm not really sure, 100%. I have to talk to my boss. I mean, associate. All right, let me know, and I'll let you know. I'll, I'll get back to you on that. Um, I'm, I'll have to cast a few sending spells. I'll let you know. Sure, I'm around. All right. Well, thank you, Grub. Of course. And he kind of flies out into the food truck. <laughs> His grub hub. I love it. I love it, and I hate it at the same time. But you know what? We deserve it after all the shit we've put Chris through. You really do. <laughs> Very true. We do. Um, while this is going on, uh, Saren, you see uh, someone comes over to you at the tavern, and this is the Air Ganassi woman from the boat. The, the boat. <laughs> the boat that you... Uh, the boat. <laughs> the boat, the eh? Boat. <laughs> the boat that you... Uh, she's the one that you saved from the uh, sea that she jumped into. Um, and she walks over, and she has a little basket. Um, and she's like, Hi, uh, you're, you're Saren, yeah? Hello. Yes, it's good to see you again. Hi, uh, you too. Uh, you see she has like grayish skin. She has white like floating eyes, kind of like the wisps of a cloud. Uh, very similar. Her hair kind of cur curls down the side of her face and frames it, but it's wispy and it changes like a cloud. Uh, she says, well, my name's Zephyr. I'm, I'm part of the crew that uh, brought you over here. Uh, I, just, I just wanted to say thank you. And she kind of like timidly shoves this like basket towards you. Um, and inside you see like some handles of rum, a few of them recently just purchased and like some nice cheeses and things oh my god <laughs> that's very kind of you uh i, I are you all right i know that was probably pretty traumatic yeah i don't know how most of you braved it uh, you're all braver than me for now you'll get there i think so too but anyways i just i just wanted to say thank you Thank you. Take care. I'm sure we'll see each other again soon. Sure, yeah. I'll, I'll be in the city, and I'm part of the crew, so once you go back, I'll be around. Sounds good. And what was your name? I'm so sorry. My name's Zephyr. Zephyr. Very nice to meet you, Zephyr. You too. And she kind of turns around and kind of walks out of the bar. <laughs> I'm going to turn around to the group and be like, I got a gift basket. What do I do with it? Yeah, you did. What is it? <laughs> Boss was just grinning. <laughs> What's in it? Cheese, rum. Is it nice rum? Is it nice rum? Yeah, it's pretty high quality. Yeah? You made a friend. You... I would like to make a rum cake. <laughs> oh, a rum cake. Cake. 
And Jax leans over to Blossom, definitely more than friends. Nudge, nudge with the elbow. <laughs> it's a gift basket. <laughs> Wait, is it a Nance basket? I got Yeah, know we've that. met Nance. She's <laughs> so far from Nance. <laughs> hey, you know what? She might just have a Nance basket laying around. They are like Maybe a Maybe she's franchise. Vessel. Maybe she has franchise. Who knows? Jesus <laughs> Christ. Maybe Nance is like freaking Nurse Joy of basket shops, and there's just like another Nance clone in everyone. That is true, maybe. <laughs> the only way you can tell the difference oh, is a single did. freckle somewhere on the body. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you mean my sister, Nance! <laughs> uh, so that, the unless you all want to do anything else, that night comes to a close. You're able to find lodging for pretty cheap, because uh, Grub vouches for you, so. Sweet. Uh, I will want to check in on the Order of the Weave just to see kind of like oh, sure. what, how how they're feeling kind of. Sure. Do, uh, you, do you all want to go or just Sarah? They're welcome to come with me. Whoever wants to come with me is welcome. I'll go with. Okay. Uh, so you, you go up to the like the right shoulder, you take the lift and it's it's like the, the drunk train. There's a lot of drunk the people. Um, and you make it up to the tower. Um, it is a it kind of, like I mentioned, there's a hole in the shoulder of this clay figure and it branches out of the shoulder. Um, and you see a dark tower, uh, black uh, onyx stone lines this cylindrical area. And there's no lock on the door or anything. The other towers seem so welcoming. This looks like a wound. It's a flare for the dramatic, certainly. Taking it lightly. Shall we knock? Let's. No. The door kind of swings open on its own. Is that unusual? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. <clears throat> okay. I'm going to poke my head in. Okay. You walk this... in, or you poke in, yeah. and you see a large cylindrical room. Uh, in the center is a large table with a map of the world, like spread out onto it and there's little figures and um but they're like astral and illusions um that are kind of moving around and they're all labeled in different locations kind of like a war map um and sure. you see a woman uh, she is half elven she has uh slightly pointed ears but not enough to indicate a full-blooded elf uh she has short black hair that kind of uh sits right above her ears and she has deep green eyes she's wearing red robes with brownish gold kind of dull trim um and she looks over and she's like Oh, hello. Good evening. Hello. I'm Saren. I work with Master Quill. Oh, well, welcome. I didn't know Quill's apprentice was in town. Please come in. Yes, of course. Uh, is it all right if my friend joins me? Of course, yes. I'll bring Ren in. Yeah. Uh, the front door was unlocked. That seems rather unusual. Oh, well, yes. I. Uh, it... I'm not afraid of many visitors, if that makes sense. <clears throat> I don't feel the need for locks. I never really have. In what manner? Well, you've already passed the test. You weren't incinerated at the door. You're obviously not undead or fiendish in nature. So congratulations. Thank you. That's rather interesting. Are you... I'm so sorry. What was your name? Oh, my name is Varia Elinar, or Varia the Red, I'm called. Do I know of her? You've probably heard her name mentioned, but probably not really anything about her. Other than okay. maybe she lives in this town, but that's about it. Okay. I've I've heard of you. Are you the only person who lives in this tower? Oh, currently, yes. My apprentice lives in town as well. He will be along sometime tomorrow, I'm sure, but for now, yes. I see. Well, I just wanted to see, uh, the order tends to have the fingers on the pulse of a city, and I just wanted to check in and see what you thought. We're dealing with a rat problem in the sewers at the moment. Ah, uh, yes, the demon rats. And she walks over and flips open one of her books. Yes, how did you know they were demon rats? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, some of the rats scurried into my tower and they were evaporated. So I could tell that they were somewhat demonic or maybe undead. I just venture to guess. 
and she's flipping through a book now and she she opens it up and she points and she's like yes right on time the demon rats are gonna be solved solved what, what do you mean solved I'm sorry, I'm not doing a very good job of explaining tonight. Um, actually, I can't really explain it. And she, you look over and the book is like empty, complete empty that she's pointing out. Are you a seer? Oh, I, I suppose we have many names and that is one. I, I've definitely been able to see different ways time can resolve itself. Sure, if that's what you mean. I suppose. Huh. I thought they were fairy tales, to be honest. Oh, that's... There's not many fairy tales that can't be explained with some bit of magic. I suppose not. How long have you been with the Weave? Um, in this lifetime, probably 15 years. She, she <laughs> scans through the book, she's like, yep, 15 in five days. In this lifetime? Well, sure, yes. My, my family is born anew and born the same at the same time. Am I believing anything that this woman is spewing? <laughs> like an insight check. This is so fucking far-fetched. What the hell? Uh, insight. 17 plus 4 is a 21. Yeah, you believe her. I mean, she's Fuck. she's not trying to lie. She's very calm. She's not sweating at the brow as she's telling you these things or passing them off. She's just perhaps sees the flow of time differently. Does that That's reincarnation fair. thing ring a bell for me? Have I heard of that somewhere? Um, yeah, definitely. I mean, you've heard of reincarnation before. I I don't need to explain why, but I mean, you know um, why that happens and how that happens. And it's, it's rare that an entire bloodline will go through that, but it's not unheard of that someone could be reincarnated. Uh, well, I just, I wanted to check in. And do you need anything? How long are you in town? Uh, at least for two weeks. Well, come on over. And she shows you to the table. Um, and she shows you the town that you're in. And uh, these aren't like military forces or anything like that you'd expect. It's actually problems that are occurring in every single town across the globe. Um, and she has them laid out and she's like, it's quite the burden to bear alone. I wouldn't be opposed to you taking one off my hands. And there's like a, there's just like a huge list on Coupe de Lane. Oh my God. I look at Bryn like, what the fuck have I done? <laughs> she looks over to Bryn and she's like, necromancer, yes? Uh... Yes. Aspiring, at least. <laughs> More of an inborn neck. She looks back to her um, little table, and she picks up a card, uh, and it kind of materializes as she pulls it out of the illusion, and it says the broken soul on it, and she hands it to you. Or one of you. doesn't matter. I'll take it. And she, sa she says, well, perhaps you could look into the broken soul for me. I hear they're causing some trouble in town. Certainly. Of course. As imperfect as the flow of time is, I wish I could tell you more about what they're doing, but it is a problem at the end of my to-do list, frankly. Well, okay. You can handle this, I'm sure. Uh, I'm, I'm so sorry. Who's your apprentice? Just in case I run into them. Uh, his name is William. He's a halfling man. Okay. Perfect. It's quite kind. I look forward to meeting him then. If you'll excuse us. I just wanted to check in and make sure everything was alright. Of course, thank you for coming by. And I will say that I hope I see you at the, the meeting next month. And Yes, I, I'm scheduled to be there. Great, I hope, I hope the new member is someone that we can all rely on. I hope so too. Fingers crossed. Sorry, um... Before we go, you said the rat problem would be solved. Oh, right. What, uh, what was that about? Oh, sure. I mean, it's supposed to be solved soon, is it not? And she rechecks the book. She flips back. She's like, yeah, I don't, I don't know the solution, nor how it will happen, or when it, or I know when, but not who will solve it. But it is set to be solved this month. Oh. Okay, I got very nervous for a second. I was 
concerned there might be a third element at play that we were not familiar with. That would be we'll just be okay. our luck. I think what trust your instincts. That... Well, come by again. It was lovely having you all. Of course. Thank you. I'll bring you some refreshments the next time I visit. Please do. She smiles sweetly at you. you. Uh, she kind of smiles sweetly at you as you leave, and then uh, as you leave, the door kind of shuts behind you again. Um, and as you kind of leave, you, you chance a glance back, and she's pouring over the table. And she's looking at all the other cities in Tolos, and ch she's like, no, that one won't work today. And she's like, just trying to check off all these problems off of her list. Is that a right, Master Quill? He could have at least told me. <laughs> that looks exhausting. Can you imagine? I don't really want to. Sometimes no, it feels I... like we have more problems than we could ever solve. Oh my gosh, did you see that stack that she had? Uh, it. What a nightmare. I, I will also Do say. Do not envy her. No. I will also say that in Hagramar, uh, you may have chanced to look just because you know you're kind of quills there. Um, it does say like chaos storms is over it, um, and that's kind of what he told you he was dealing with when you left. Right. We do need to go back and take care of that. So it does kind of check I, out. <laughs> I do want to say, um, Bryn did her best to try and memorize as much of that map as she could in the brief period of time we had. Sure. Yeah. Uh, where? Same. I'll say what what city were you looking at in particular? Hagramir. I'll give I'll give you both one city. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. I would have um, I would have focused on Hagramir because that's where Quill is. Yeah. I would have checked out Maywood. Okay. <laughs> Oh, you guys are gonna hate me so much. Um, okay, so <laughs> the in Hagramar it says the chaos storms is the number one priority. Uh, it also says um, the wilting willow is another one. Uh, and you know these aren't all gonna be things y'all have heard of. <laughs> like it's there's a there's a big world out there. Yeah. Um, and then the third one is the soot hills. And then there's a fourth, and it says. Um, what is his name? One second, that's kind of important. It's uh, kind of important, oh no. <laughs> Yikes. Oh no. <laughs> what have we done? <laughs> I just wanted to check in. <laughs> hey, you uncovered Didn't mean some... to accept 73 quests. <laughs> uh, I'll find it later, but it's basically, oh no, it's, it's called the Wine Top District. Hey, that's all it says. <laughs> So yeah, there's a bunch of quests. And then uh, you said Maywood as well. Um, the, the first one is um, Unruly Leadership is the first thing that's listed. Um, <laughs> second one is Taunt Under Love. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Checks um, out. <laughs> He's his own problem. Yeah, it, truly, he gets his own list. <laughs> um, and then the third one, I'll give you a third one too. I have to check it out, but... I'll give you a third one in Discord this week. Okay. So yeah, that's what you learn. You you know that Varia Elinar is like the ultimate problem solver of the weave, and she just deals with everyone else's shit. <laughs> really do not envy her. I glanced that map, and I already need a drink. Yeah, that's not good for the anxiety. No. Let's go back to the tavern or wherever we're staying. And do you want to try the bottle of rum with me? I might try baking something. I don't really drink. Oh, that's right. I'm so sorry. A rum cake actually does sound good. Yeah, I have an old recipe that I picked up along the way. I wouldn't mind breaking that out again. Sure. Just I might taste test the rum beforehand just to make <laughs> sure it's not poison. <laughs> Better safe than sorry, yeah? I completely agree. <laughs> the last, the last problem in Maywood uh, is just uh, it just says Nana. <laughs> <laughs> Nana? Yeah, that's all it says. Yeah, you could you could ask around. She's a she's a treat. You guys should go meet Nana just for fun. <laughs> I forgot about her. She's an old one of those NPC. optional quests. Yeah. <laughs> oh God, maybe next time. <laughs> I think yeah, we just need to do a bunch of side quests. We just got to clear out some side missions. <laughs> Um, Alright, so you all find sleep one way or the other. 
Um, unless there's anything else anyone wants to do before we go to bed. All right. So in um, our last. Oh. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Y'all, we need to start role playing before Chris fucks us up. Let's go. I will yeah. bake a cake. <laughs> I will assist um, making the cake. Let's and talk I will... about uh, all the ingredients. Um, <laughs> I, I would officially like to like have Adrian start a, a personal training uh, yes. business. Amazing. Are you looking for some storefront or are you just doing it in the streets these days? She's a personal trainer. She doesn't need a storefront. True. She yeah. Goes to them. Yeah. I mean, I, we move around so much. It's like a it's like a once in a lifetime thing. Like yeah. Adrian shows up in your town. You, you gotta Ooh. sign up for her boot camp. It, 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 it's, it's Adrian. I can imagine Adrian does like the stunt boot camp from Bob's Burgers. No. Like they throw yeah. each other through windows and shit. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so Adrian, you, uh, Ronan, the the Tabaxi Lion guy that you fought the night before, yeah. he meets you in some athletic, <laughs> an athletic outfit the next day. Yes. Uh, and he's doing he some like a stretches. Sweat bands pulling yeah. the main back. His main, yeah. <laughs> he's doing some stretches as it's kind of back into his main bun. That was pretty good. Um, and yeah, he meets you there. And then there's like five other tabaxi friends that he brought along. And you kind of pick up some people in the streets as you go. Roland shows up as, and he's like hauling, just he's hoofing it in the back. He's having a hard time. Um, but yeah, you just kind of run through the streets, <laughs> just picking up people who want to work out dope i i love it uh, honestly just i i, I want to become like that fabled trainer that when they're in town like you gotta go to their their big workout event i love it uh, so you're starting a cult yeah no they don't come with me <laughs> they might i don't want them to once again it's that scene from forest go just <laughs> right <laughs> why are you running <laughs> Oh. And then Adrian gets done running. All right, workout over, and everyone's like, "Oh, okay." <laughs> Time no. to go home. <laughs> everyone, we finish our first five mile run, and I said, "Okay, warm up's done." And everyone goes, "Oh." All right. Anyway, Chris, just fuck us up. I'm not gonna Happy fuck Thursday. you guys up. <laughs> you say that. Why is it Lies. such a bad thing? Lies and slander. I mean, we love it because Don't get everyone, us wrong. everyone who has watched you DM on this stream, it's been like over a year now. We all know your tricks. You wait for like the last 15, 10 minutes, I do not. and then you drop a, a hella cliffhanger on our. I asses. have never once done that. <laughs> yeah, that. You do it like every stream. What are you talking about? Um, <laughs> what is your plan the next morning? Oh, geez. What's the next thing we want to go after? I guess my guess would be maybe the broken soul. I would have, I and or Bryn would have brought it up uh, because that is a conversation we definitely want to have about the weird lady that yeah. I ran into. Yeah, may maybe we sa save that for, I don't know, next time when I completely forget about that conversation ever occurring. So it would be like a nice <laughs> little recap for me. <laughs> I mean, we can do it now. I don't really have a cliffhanger, I'm going to tell you now. That's what you say. But I'm calling I... bullshit. Insight check. <laughs> yeah, insight check no. against the DM. Oh, that's like a 17 plus. Oh shit. Why All right, I Chris. Have... <laughs> I got I got a 22. You have to tell me if there's a cliffhanger. I, I don't, I make don't the have rules. a cliffhanger. <laughs> you believe him. Yes, you do. <laughs> um, yeah, if you want to check out the broken soul today, we can do that in the last 20 minutes. We can start that at least. Um, yeah. Oh, Vario was supposed to tell you more. Oh, well. Nah, we can find oh out. Gosh. We'll get to it. <laughs> Look, um... I told her I'd come back, so... True. <sighs> what else we got in this town? Sounds like a bunch of nerdy shit to me. <laughs> Pull up our to-do list again. Are there any... I guess if we're just trying to think of things, are there any like sendings or messages that we need to get out to like update anybody else about where we are or check in? Like, does King Jax want to check in with his family or something? Just because if we've got like, you know, the evening of downtime right now, that seems like a good possibility. Um. Nothing? Okay. 
I'm like, I'm looking over the to-do list. <laughs> yeah, the only things really are to deal with the demon rats and the guy who got his ass kicked down there. And right. then um, to look into the broken soul in Coupe de Lane where a bunch of adventurers were killed or went missing at least. Um, and that's really it. You could ask around if there's... Oh, and then uh, B, Breath of Fresh Air, told you to come back and she has more stuff for you to do if you wanted. Okay. Well, my my vote would be the Broken Soul, or... Yeah, that would be next on my list, too. Okay. Yeah, I feel like that's our biggest thing, immediate lead. So I'll say that uh, through all of you kind of asking around through town, you can kind of track down the location of the Broken Soul. And it it's like the worst kept secret in town. Everyone knows that they're doing really sketchy shit. Not necessarily that it's necromancy, just the extent to which it is necromancy. Uh, talking to someone who has been dead, not even with the body present, just with contacting the soul is pretty difficult to do. So maybe it's not even that it's illegal or sketchy. It's just like the scale of the magic they're able to pull off is pretty impressive. So people talk about it. Um, eventually you, you hear from... We'll say maybe Ronan, Adrian's new workout pal. <laughs> um, he says, well... What, what about, uh, wait, what was that guy's name? Roland? Oh, the shitty guy? <laughs> Roland? Yeah, how's he doing? How's he holding up? <laughs> oh, he's barfing in the back. The oh, he settled me into yeah. Roland. Did he quit? He didn't or quit. Or is he coming back? Roland never gives up. He's coming back. All right, back. good. I'm adopting him. All right, good. <laughs> Add him to oh, the Adam crew. To the <laughs> you, know, you know, as incompetent as Roland is, I respect Try it. The I, I like respect him. the tenacity. I really yeah. do. He's one of your next characters next game. I have played that character archetype before. <laughs> so have I. Also, you know, it's not really his fault that the rats actually turned out to be devils and demons. True. It's true. Like, like yeah. not his Those fault. are not starter rats. It's yeah, true. That shit ain't level one grinding. It's a demon lord. Yeah. Um, so he kind of looks up. You know, he's gathers himself from being sick. And he's like... Well, I, I, I kind of know where the Broken Soul is. So they're, you know where I took you to the alchemist shop? They're, like, right around the yeah. corner from there. They have, like, this own, oh, like, shit. abandoned hut. And if you go in there, you can talk to dead people as long as you knew them in life is the, is the legend. They're, like, okay with people coming in to seek them out for that stuff? Yeah, it's not a well-kept secret. Huh. The That's guards, like... the guards go in there and kind of like toss the place every once in a while, but nobody's ever there, and it just starts up again. But people report talking to their loved ones, so I don't really know. Do you know like what the sort of exchange is for this? Like people, what like what's the fee? I'm assuming this group ain't just doing this out of the kindness of their weird little hearts. Oh, it's I've heard it's pretty steep gold wise, but I don't know the cost, so it might be worth checking out. I don't know how much you all got in your pockets. Just gold? Uh, that's what I heard. Um, I'm not gonna say it's just gold, but at least from what I've heard, yeah. Well, this sounds like something we should go check out. I was about to say can't hurt, but I mean, it's us, so... <laughs> oh, it certainly can. Necromancy is not to be trifled with. It probably will hurt. If not physically, right. then emotionally. Quite a lot, yeah. Well... Let's fucking go see dead people. So you you skulk through the underbelly of the city and back around towards skulk. the... And Bryn marches. Yeah. Just gives no shit. <laughs> you make it back to the shack where you got all the alchemy stuff and you do see the little halfling guy sitting on the counter like staring at you as you all kind of walk past his shop. Um... And you, you make it, you, you swear like you hear somebody running down an alley and you look down the alley, there's no one there. Detect uh, magic. Uh, uh, it's not magic. Hmm. Um, and you continue down and this woman did is outside. Did he smell anything? He did not. Weird. They did not? Uh, he, you, he, he, um... You okay. continue down the alley and you see this woman, she's doing like her laundry on like a clothesline and she's like, there's like a crack in the, the clay where the sun peeks through and she's putting her clothes out and she kind of shuts the window and goes inside when you come by. But you eventually make it to where Roland, your new town gu guide, 
uh, leads you down, and he's like, all right, this is as far as I go. Take those stairs down, first door on the right. Thank you for your help, Poland. Sure. I'm going to go take a long nap. (laughs) Poland, how much gold did you need to buy yourself that transport? I don't know. Costs are different. I mean, I need some gold to get all the way across the ocean, so a few hundred. Take a wild guess. A few hundred? Yeah, I'd say maybe two, three hundred. You can have 40. <laughs> it's a start. Thank you. <laughs> and he smiles between his aching pains and kind of scoops it into a pouch and oh, roll in. walks away. <laughs> I like him. I hope he does well in life. He dies to yeah, rats me too. tomorrow. <laughs> I was just going to say, I hope he doesn't Probably. get eaten by rats. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> so you, you walk down this like archaic old set of like stone stairs that are kind of crackling in fact probably like one of one of you wearing plate mail kind of steps down with a boot and it kind of cracks underneath of you splitting in two and you keep walking down and you see this open area it's almost like um it's almost like a courtyard but it, there's nobody around and in the center is this big well with like a stone circle and you see this like green like uh smoke kind of rising out of the depths Hello? There's no response. Anybody home? Nothing. Can Azeal hear or smell anything? Um, no, there's really just nobody around. I saunter on up to the well and peer over the edge. Okay. in a good six inches back from it. Sure, Bryn, as you do this, um, you look into the well and the water starts forming into like swirling letters of smoke that you can read. Um, and it is an elvish for you. Um, and it says, leave us a name and as much gold as you think they're worth and talk to them. Uh, actually... I was wondering if I could speak to whoever came up with this particular form of magic. You see, that's kind of in my field of study, I'm doing a dissertation. <laughs> I need to. I need to defend it, please. Um, <laughs> oh. uh, it just uh, the, it, the smoke kind of swirls and writes out the language. There is no response to that. Is the only place gold? Uh, the smoke swirls back across and it says gold or a name for a name a name for a name find us a name of someone we want and you tell us the name of the person you want to talk to and what you kill this name that I give you no it's just information what sort of names are you after True names. True names. I pull out my book. Yeah, you pull out your book, and it has a bunch of fairy lord and ladies and court members. Uh, true names in it. I cast true detect name. magic. A uh, very necromantic magic coming from this well. Yes, but it is—it is necromancy. This isn't like an illusion. It's not faked. No, nope, it's necromancy. Why do you want true names? For the times that are coming ahead. And in these times ahead, whose side will you be on? Whoever brings me the most names. Who are you? We are broken. We? There's more than one? Or do you have a complex of some kind? I don't like that. We are all around you. Are you alive? Some of us. Some of you. Not all. How long have you been here? Since the war. The God's War? Yes. Who started this? Who did this to you? We did this to us. This is the only way. You are broken. Is, is there another 
identity or name that you claim? We have been broken since the gods left, but it is not their fault. It is a way of being in a way that we find we like. Were you mortal before this happened? Yes. So you are a collective of both past and not yes. mortal beings who have been here since the gods war. Yes. And you have no particular allegiance one way or the other. No, we just are. How do you do this? How do you speak with someone who is gone? And what's the catch? In order to speak with someone who is gone, you have to be partly gone yourself. Partly gone, what does that mean? We walk across two worlds. They need me. So... So you are... Escorting... The souls back and forth for gold? Or names. Or names. What are you? It, it's at this point that it kind of goes back into like the the stock answers that it's already given you, and then it kind of repeats like we are everywhere. And... Are you at peace? Or does this make you happy? It is our duty. Your duty, self-appointed or given? Self-appointed. I look back at the gang. All right, thoughts? What do we do? I mean, oh. if they're not aligned with anybody, I do have this. And the uh, Rin, I'm someone who's walking both realms at once. Ooh, good point, Perhaps. King Jax. You probably do see ghostly figures around this well. Oh yeah, I see dead people. Yeah. Uh, can someone call Doctor Willis for me, please? <laughs> Doctor. Um, yeah, you probably see souls. In fact, I'll retcon this. Even when you saw somebody running down that alley, or you thought you heard somebody, you saw a ghostly figure running down that alley. Um, spirits, I can see you here. I walk between both the realms that you speak of. They kind of all... There's like probably a dozen here, and they all snap onto you as if just realizing that you can see them, but it's a very horror movie. They all snap at the same yeah. time and stare at you. It's, I, I would like to imagine the region, reason Kane Jax wasn't addressing them was kind of the, oh, fuck, I can see dead people still. Yeah. He's still getting used to it. He's... Thanks, I hate it. Yeah. Very... It's very jarring for him, uh, and he was hoping his friend who has a good understanding with the dead could clear this up. <laughs> um, so they, they all snap onto you, and then they seem to be done talking at this point. They're almost a little spooked that Kangrex can see them. Um, and they say, name or gold? I'll take a name. Would you like to pay in a name or gold? Dad, do you have a name? I have to pay a name. Pay yeah, a, want a get name. Get a name. For a name. Oh, beans. All right, what's the what's the gold exchange rate for a name here? How much do you think they're worth? I can put the price on my loved one. Here, look. And I'm going to open up the book, and I'm going to point to the first name listed in the book. Okay. A name all, for a name. All 12 sh shades wrap around Sarah and King Jackson. You can see this. And they stare at the book. And then they disperse for a while back to what they were doing in the blink of an eye. And I don't know the first name, but it doesn't really matter. <laughs> um, and then they look at you all and they say, who would you like to speak with? I look at the others, like. I'm gonna look at Kang Jax. I'm looking at Bryn. Uh, Does anyone have an objection? Bulin told me his final words. I shall respect his final wishes and leave him to rest. He has done more than enough work. Understandable. Plus, I don't know if I could stand to see him in this state. Uh, Bryn, do you want some privacy? 
Uh, yes, yes, I, I think I do. Uh, Rin, since I can actually see the spirits, uh, if it's all right with you, I would like to watch from a distance. Yes, yes, ensure, you, you can stay. To ensure your safety is all. With my, I still have some of my magic powers thanks to joining forces with Tiamat. I sh probably can command the spirits of the dead to some extent if things go amiss. Okay. So, I turn back to them, the spirit. Well, if if I call her across, will it harm her? Will she be able to return peacefully to last afterwards? Yes, I will ensure it. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Sarah Dwin of Clan Anadoria. That's where we'll pick up next time. <laughs> You did, you, it, did you did it, it to yourselves. Yeah. <laughs> Bitch. We walked ourselves yeah, into this one. It. You did Damn that. It. I didn't ah. do that. Ah. Oh, so good, though. Great session. I'm sorry, um, I'm sorry for breaking okay. your headphones, chat. I'm just very <laughs> emotionally charged right now. Yeah. Uh, great session, everybody. That was really good. Um, oh, that was really intense. Yeah. Shit. <laughs> I need to go lie down. Yeah. Uh, I know. I'm me like, too. oh, boy. I need another oh. drink. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about uh, it. <laughs> all right, so we're going to go around and plug. Uh, but first, thank you all for hanging out. Thanks for the raid. Uh, thank you for donators, yes. everybody. New followers, new subs, everybody coming out yeah. tonight. Thank you all. Uh, specifically, uh, the, sh the raid from that girl, that place, 114. Wanted to yeah. give you by name. Thank you. Yes, thank you so thank much. Thank you. Did we have two raids tonight? I'm not sure. It's possible. I, I think I, I didn't see one. a pop up, but I did see like a, a weird, spike, like yeah. a, a spike. Yeah. Yeah, so. we, we spiked. So if you did raid us, I'm sorry we didn't see your name. It didn't I've been show told up in chat. Twitch is buggy lately, so yeah, the, yeah. the notification may not whole... have gone through. Right. The well, thank you. Either way, if you're watching this still, if you're yes. still hanging out, thanks for coming thank out. You. Hope yeah. you enjoyed what you saw. New people in chat. Thanks so much. Um, let's start with Abby. Oh. Hey. Uh, hello. Um, I don't have a ton to plug right now because I'm I'm depresso espresso because the world is on fire. Um, but I I will be pouring some more dice soon, especially this next coming week. So keep an eye out for cool dice pictures, uh, especially now that I have my own molds. Uh, besides that, uh, check out come hang out with me tomorrow, and I will let Alex talk more about what what that's gonna be. <laughs> Thank you, Kate. Hi, I'm Kate. Uh, I'm also Depresso Espresso. Um, and so, <laughs> solidarity. So, uh, if I'm not on here, you can find me on Twitter. Um, normally, I talk about gaming stuff, but, you know, given the state of things, I'm very righteously angry and I wake up full of piss and vinegar. So, you'll see me yelling about the state of the world a lot currently. Um, so, just if that's something you're not okay with and you need to take some space, you might want to avoid my Twitter for a little while. Uh, if you do want to follow me, you can follow me at Kate's D8s. Um, but I'm either here or on Twitter. Thank you, Lucy. <clears throat> I am also <laughs> three in a <laughs> row. Everybody it's okay. At the table. It's valid. It's, it's valid as fuck. Oh, it's okay. The on fire. And it's, what, oh my God. Um, you can find me on Twitter at Bluebird Draws. Um, I post a lot of art. I am also angry at the moment. Um, I run elsewhere on the first Tuesday of every month. I am I run Clockwork Hearts, which is playing on a system that I designed called the Clockwork Hearts system, which may or may not be getting a one shot this month, depending on player interest. Uh, we have been having audio issues with our last episode, so it's super late, but we are working on it, I promise. Um, and what else do I do? I play in the other Wednesday game, Steam Spell, as Cat Steel, and that is it. <laughs> Thank you, Sam. 
everyone, I am Sam. You can find me on Twitter at the Sam Wisest. I'm Samwise underscore Game G here on Twitch. I'm a disability advocate and a TTRPG streamer. Uh, you can, I pretty much live here. So you can find me on Wednesdays and on Mondays, as well as in elsewhere on the first Tuesday of the month. Um, I am going to be running a game of dialect for our Pride event. I'm still raising funds for the Bail Project. That's going to be happening on Saturday, June 20th. Uh, the time is still to be determined, but I'm really excited. It's a wonderful game. We have a great cast. Um, and I'm also going to be playing uh, the day before on Friday the 19th in our Sleepaway uh, TTRPG one-shot for Pride. So please come and check that out. We're going to keep raising funds for the Bail Project. Um, and right now, I think that's all I've really got going on. But join our Discord if you like getting, like, maybe teasers for a Dark Crystal powered by the Apocalypse hack that Alex and Kate and I are working on. <laughs> yeah, we totally got added during the stream, too. Like, oh, someone, did we? <laughs> someone was like, oh my god, I want to play a Thra game. And then uh, Leland was like, have you talked to... Oh, hey. <laughs> Have you talked to Sam, Alex, and Kate yet? <laughs> yeah, so check that out, because uh, it's going to be really cool when it's finished. So, so good. Join our Discord for that. Yeah. And uh, I think that's it for me. Uh, Chris. Great, Alex. Am I looking the right way? I don't know. I don't know. Oh, me? Yeah, you are. Chris, do you want me to get like the big one that we talked about before we went, or are you going to take care of that one? I can do it. It's not a big deal. You go for it, because I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> All right. So I got two big things. Uh, the first one's a new action. It's oh, an actual that. play. Yeah. Tomorrow, we're going to be premiering a um, passion homebrew project of mine I've been working on. I've drummed up a wonderful cast that includes Abby and Chris. And it is a setting that I've cooked up that is inspired by Warhammer 40K and all of my other weird fantasy fandom things it's like a weird mix of cyberpunk 40k and fan and traditional fantasy <laughs> um it's gonna be a good time perilous sun it starts tomorrow here at 7 p.m est it's gonna be wild chris is like playing as an oni abby's a reploid and we have a mouse person in a power armor like it's gonna be a great time. Uh, I highly recommend you check it out. It's a huge passion project of mine. It's gonna be like the last like D twenty ish thing I'm gonna be running for a while. So um, check it out. The other big announcement is is that uh, Chromatic Chimera is happy to announce that we are expanding our admin team. We've added a new member to our administration team. As of today, Noir Enigma has joined the Chromatic Chimera administration team as our director of charity and sponsorship outreach and our diversity specialist so uh do go follow noir enigma on twitter give him all of your love because he is perhaps the funniest individual i've ever met and um we are very excited to have him on our team with us uh we think he's gonna be he's a he's a great addition to our team and he can only bring so much more to this channel uh we're very excited for the next chapter in our little stream life. Thank you. I'm going to kind of leave it at that. All my announcements are out of the way for everybody. Um, but thank you again. Thank you, Roll20, for uh, sponsoring us with your Spotlight program. Uh, again, really great. Um, again, if you haven't checked out the City of Mist campaign that we wrapped last week, go do that on YouTube. It is super easy to use Roll20 for that and makes... Uh, the MC's job super easy, but besides that, I am in all of the games, or a lot of the games, and you can catch me there. So thank you all. Uh, have a great evening, and thank you all for joining us tonight. Thank you. Good night. Toodles.